All right, go ahead, please stand. Grab this hymn book out. Grab this hymn book out, and we're going to go to 65. Can't get better than these old hymns. Number 65. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. Because we just wish that everyone would just leave that book alone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, see, like 1880, the RSV, on, and man. the PCP, then all the others, G's and B's. And they, they, they're still trying to make a perfect yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Just leave that thing alone. Yeah. <laughs> you got to Trying God's word to revise, just leave it alone, just leave it alone. No longer sign or this passage they rise. Don't change it, just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Tis God's blessed word who signed it for evil. His word and his line tells of goodness divine. Don't change it, just leave it alone. No mortal can better this message of old. Just leave it alone, just leave it alone. It's far the best story that ever was told. Amen. Yeah. 
same as in ages of life. Just leave it alone, just leave it alone. And still its great giver is reigning on high. Don't change it, just leave it alone. For some of you who don't know, that song was written during a time when the revised version was coming out. And sadly, even the classic dispensationalists were using it because of higher education rising. So there were discontented preachers who were frustrated and upset, and they wrote a song, Just Leave It Alone. Just Leave It Alone. But some of these uh, so-and-sos, uh, you don't want, if you want to see me, be very sarcastic and hard. It's those higher educated so-called Christians. So I'm not going to do that. I'll let Anthony, Anthony Rudolph rant out to you. <laughs> He's going to speak his mind. <laughs> I think we're going to be in trouble after this. <laughs> I, I think his preaching will have to censor it. And you know, that, that way you two don't shut us down. You know, actually, here's a funny story. You know when YouTube uh, just uh, marked us oh, or put yeah, a label yeah. on us? It's not with the white guy in our church. And it's not this Korean. It's because of a black guy who just doesn't know how to shut his mouth. Amen. And this black brother was teaching. And then YouTube said, oh, this was, you know, a racist or this was, this was not good. And I'm like, it's a black guy for crying out loud, you know. But uh, YouTube AI, you know, uh, they claim that, you know, we do not look at skin color, so we cannot tell. Yeah, they were sure blind as a bat, yeah. so they could not tell, you know. So anyways, uh, we might have to censor it after this. Hey, come on, preacher! <laughs> Thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You, you know he crazy, right? <laughs> he picked me up off the airplane and told me, let me tell you the first thing I need to tell you. It's only one black guy. It's only room for one black guy at this church. <laughs> I was the only black person at the whole Baptist church. So <laughs> we was the first black family there, so it's, it's not a problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, as I try to calm down and relax, because this is an honor. Uh, this is an honor. I want to be a blessing to you. This is, I'm not in a competition. I'm, I'm Anthony Rudolph. I, we did that when we was kids. We, that's what we do in Detroit. This, not, this is not what this is. We're in a cooperation. We're trying to help one another. And it's Sunday morning, and it's the Sunday school hour. So take your Bibles and turn to Psalms chapter 19. I want, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to be a part of this service, a part of this blowout, a, a part of uh, trying to be a blessing to folk, the country. I don't know who's on YouTube. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to be famous. I, I could care less about it. But what I want to do is I want to see some folk get saved. I want to see some folk grow in the grace and knowledge and wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ and fall in love with this book. Folk, I'm here right now because of this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. I'm a Bible believer yes, yeah, yeah. and I believe this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just had a great grandmother that just told me, babies, the King James Bible is the word of God and don't let nobody take it from you. Yes, sir. And so I believe the book. Yes, yes. This morning we, we go and we talk to somebody. He's some, I'm 75 years old and it's, it's a black man. And he talking about some sea bubbles <laughs> and talking about uh, 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 being some when they came to this country, what they was. I said, man, I'm from Detroit. <laughs> I ain't been to Africa. I'm not from Africa. I'm American. Yeah. 
put that in your Bible believing uh, cup and drink it. <laughs> If you're not American, you're un-American. Yeah, yeah. Care if you put another nationality in front of America, you ain't from America. Yeah. I ain't got to respect nothing you think. <laughs> now the truth of the matter is, I really don't respect nothing you think if it's not Bible. Because yeah. if you want to do something, you're going to help somebody, you're going to have to give them Bible. Now, we say in America, we, if people love waving their Bible, believing flag and they do all of that junk and whatever. And we was doing the Shem, Ham and Japheth thing yesterday. We did it a few days in a row, Shem, Ham and Japheth. And I love it. And I love it. But I'll tell you, if you Bible believer or not, if you believe Shem, Ham and Japheth and you, is him, and you are Ham's big brother, and Ham can't handle his money. And Ham don't know he's not spiritually mature as you. Come on, brother. As a big brother, you're supposed to help. Now, let me give you some understanding. I'm not just talking. I have a little sister. She is my little sister. She has she lost custody of all seven of her kids. I took custody of three of them and raised them from one, two, and three. That's what big brothers do. Give me your garbage. And guess what? I don't care where you at. You can do your Bible thumping wherever you want to. Come find me. I'll fly to where you at and we can do the with the Bible. But you believe this book. Believe the book. This book ain't American. It's, uni it's beyond the universe. And the Bible says in Psalms 19, and this is a psalm, but this is the psalm as David, uh, and it's a psalm, and he says, To the heavens, the, excuse me, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firm of it showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where the voice is not heard. The emphasis is on. Uh, whatever you, whatever language you speak, speak or language, uh, whatever, the voice of the Lord is heard in that language and in that speech. Amen. The Bible says the lion has gone out through all the earth and the, their words to he, the, excuse me, and the, all the earth and their words to the end of the world. And them have he set a tabernacle for the son, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoice of as the strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord, the judgments of the Lord are true and right altogether. All right, Mike, Brother Reagan, that's Brother Reagan is my friend. He's from Detroit. I love him. If you got a problem with him, you have a problem with me. <laughs> we listen, we when we're not missing anything, I need you to pray for me. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Uh, this is a blessing. Uh, brother and, and listen I respect your ministry and we're not trying to get you censored we're not trying to do none of that I want it to continue on 
because you've done something, you use some wisdom that other folk didn't do. And when they first saw you doing it, they was like, oh, that's stupid. Yeah, sure, right. And now they look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the only reason it was stupid because you thought of it first. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Had they thought of it first that you should have followed me when I did it. That's what they'd say. But uh, I want to speak to and I, we, we're Bible believers, so I want to speak to God's word. But before we do that, God set something up in this in this in this psalm. And it, talk, it speaks to the declarative power of creation, how powerful and declare, God's declarative power in creation. It, it declares the Bible says in uh, Psalms, the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens, the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, in the beginning of what? In the beginning of time. It takes no note. It talks nothing about in the beginning of God. It says the beginning of time. Time was made for you and me. God, the God of the Bible is standing outside of time and time is down there. He's looking down on time when he says one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. It means nothing to him. He has the beginning and the end. He has a plan for your life and it is not your plan. You know what our problem is? Our plans. Our ideas. And our ambition, some of your ambition, you, you need to dig up a hole every, for, for, for 10 years in a row and throw your ambitions in there. Throw your dreams in there and get rid of them because they are what, hin they are what, they are what are, is hindering you from serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they got you thinking that you're somebody. I'm so sick of motivational speakers man, motivating you. You need to feel good about yourself. No, you need to know that you was a stinking sinner. You know, when you figure out that you a sinner, you, you know what happens? You know what? You know what's wrong with old folk? Old folk find out like I wasn't all this time. God been taking care of me. And I thought I was doing something. So when young folk listen to old folk, they're like, wait, I, you, I won't listen to you. I got plans and you're old and fuddy duddy. No, they're just more wiser and they, they see you in themselves. Yeah. They, see, yes, they see themselves in you and they says, don't, don't waste your time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's why we think old folk are uh, getting in the way because they're just trying to warn us of not being them. Yeah. Or, you know, when you're, you know, I love when moms say you remind me of you act just like your dad. What they're really saying is, oh, I can't. I used to act just like that. I can't stand it. You are so right. You that's what and that's the same thing when we say I hate a liar. We know what you're saying. I hate. But this book, all creation points to an all powerful, marvelous and wonderful God. When I was out there this morning, the guy, his name is Critchlow, and he says, I don't but I was an atheist. I said, there's no such thing. Yes. <laughs> it ain't no such thing as an atheist. Yes. Uh, you can, you know, people profess to be Christians in America all the time. Uh -huh. I'm a Christian. Why? Because uh, I was born in America. I went to a uh, I went to a church. I go to church. We were born in church. It's Catholic church. It's Presbyterian church. It's a church of God, church of body in Christ by all types of different churches. That don't make you a Christian. That's right. That's right. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised you from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, OK, you might be a Christian, but are you saved? Are you born again? And if you got born again, how did you get born again? Yeah. And don't tell me about no dirty sewer water. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it, listen, you could have the best water. I don't know. Do they got good water in California? No. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. When you know, when when new when what his name Gavin when Gavin talks, y'all have the best of everything. So I'm sure. I, I'm no. I, I'm sure that's what he believes. So when y'all. Y'all water is better out here than it is there. But guess what? That water that you washing with, you ever notice that you still keep getting funky? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you get in here, <laughs> it ain't broke. It ain't broke. Relax, relax. <laughs> Listen. When you get in here, that's the first act of obedience unto the Lord. It does not make you say. <laughs> 
I'm sure. I don't know if you all have that problem here, but where I'm at, when you ask them, are they saved? Yeah, I got baptized. And there's many churches that teach them that, oh, you got to get baptized and all of that. I'm sure you you've ran into that. But this book, this book is beyond anything that you can imagine. God in creation. Take your Bibles and turn to Psalms 119. Uh, we're in the Sunday school hour. So let's resp- let's treat it as that. We want folk to grow in the grace and knowledge and wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's treat it as that. We say it all the time. We, we come to we want to be a blessing. You want to be a blessing to folk. You want to help them to grow in the grace and knowledge and wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and verse 13, the Bible says, with my lips, I have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth is all creation points to the glory of God. You need to take your mouth and glorify God. That's what it's for. You use it for so many other things, but that's what it's for. The Bible uh, is not only it is God is power, his power for his, his power is marvelous, but his powerful power is undeniable. Yes. Nobody can take dirt and make life out of it. Yeah. Nobody. You know, when people say I read the Bible, it says, it's in the first 10 chapters. You have not read it. Man ain't that good. You know, when people tell you that I have the Ten Commandments and, they, and I, you know, my thing is I got little pet peeves sayings. I say, well, if you you can't keep something that you don't know. So give me ten. There's ten. Give me five. They can't give you five. But more even more important than that. There's millions of people in the world. And a lot of people like to blame their sin on the other folk. It was two people in the world in the beginning and it was only one commandment and they broke it. Now, this is just a little simple math. God's math is not like your math, but this is a little simple math. <laughs> Two people, one commandment, they couldn't keep it. Billions of people, 10 commandments, they can't keep it. And although there's not 10, if you go in the Old Testament, there's 300 of them, over yeah. 300. Of, wait a minute, I'm saying it wrong. 200 of them oh. in the Old Testament. And they wish you ain't talking about the New Testament commandments to the Christian. They're not suggestions in the New Testament. You do know that. God didn't save you and give you. It's not the liberty to do what you want. It's the liberty to do that at which is right with that which pleases God. You have you now have the power to please God. Yes. You do realize that before you got saved, you, you were uh, Romans chapter six, verse 22. I'm a butcher the verse. So instead of butchering it, I'll just I just know it in my head. Uh, I started verse 21, uh, verse 20. The Bible says, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. You hear that? When you were in bondage to sin, when you were the servant to sin, the Bible says you were free from something. Free. That means you had the freedom to do that which was unholy to God. That which Wrong that with sin. Amen. Read your Bibles. Everybody wants some freedom. What they really talking about, they want the freedom to do that which is sin, which is wrong, which is an abominable to God, which abhors God. Yeah. Wow. Then the Bible says, what fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are not ashamed? For the end of those things is death. You know what the fruit they had? Killing their kids, their grandkids, their community, their their city, their uh, Judea, Ju- Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. <laughs> That's the fruit of it. That's the fruit of it. Now, God got me ministering at a place where I sold drugs to the whole community. And now I get to see the fruit of it. I get to see their kids and their grandkids all messed up and I'm trying to minister to them. And I and, and, you know, you see some stuff and, you know, you you want to act like it don't bother you, but it's killing you. And then you want to say, God, well, can we fix it? No, 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 no. You need to keep looking at it. Because you help cause this. 
do the work that I called you to do. You can't explain that to nobody. They don't know what they're talking about. Everybody got an idea for you. I don't care about your ideas. God's not interested in your ideas. Take it, but that is it. But now, verse 22, being made free from sin and become servants to God, the God of the Bible. Not just any God. Fruit of the holiness and to and the end ever. God wants you to have some fruit, but it's not the fruit that you think. Forget your ideas because your ideas will keep you slave. You will be uh, the servant of sin. And it calls you to be a servant to sin, a servant to that which is not right. And you will be free from God. So when you go to minister to somebody, keep that in mind. When you look at some Christians, I can't understand why they won't do with some non saved not a Christian. When somebody that's not saved and you look at them, you say, I can't understand why you would do something like that. Why you look like that? Why you act like that? They don't have all sinners know how to do it. Sin. You know, men do what they've been taught. You know, some folk. Listen, I heard a guy told me dispensationalism is from the pit of hell. Now, listen, I was licking my chops when he did it. I was licking my chops when he did it now. But what I did know. His professor taught him that. And he's only saying it because he don't understand. So I says, you do know it's the Old Testament and the New Testament. Right? And then I said, you, you do know that you can't build an ark. For 120 years. To the saving of eight souls. I didn't say no more. I said no more. I just put that there and just left it there and just kept moving. Now, listen, I know I, I did that and I purpose. Listen, understand this. I, I purposely do it because I, I like to mess with dudes and I like to antagonize. <laughs> That's one of my ministries. <laughs> but. But understand this, understand this, right? He doesn't know any better. And I knew that he was thinking, you know what, it, listen, and it happens all the time. They see some, Brother Reagan know what I'm about to say, they see some little black dude with a Bible. And if you don't know, I'm from Detroit, so you, you, you heard what you heard on the news about Detroit that you, you know, you got to be more intelligent and more smarter and intellectual than those people in Detroit, especially a black dude from the hood. I know they're doing that and I'm I'm lulling them to sleep. I will rock you to sleep with this book. I'll play the game with you. I'll, you want to talk? I'll box you in on this side and play with you and laugh with you. You thinking you running around on this side and I'll box you in on this side with the Bible and you playing and running around. I said, what about the Perhaps for adventure, what do you think about it? Have, have you considered this? You know what I'm saying? And then when you get out of control, then the Detroit come out of me like, man, stop playing around. You sugar footing around, man, get with the truth. Oh yeah, I'll do it all the time. But my concern is for you to grow in grace and knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ. My concern is for you to get saved. So because, listen, my approach is not going to be your approach. You haven't seen what I've seen. You haven't done the things I've done. You haven't wasted the time that I've wasted. So I, under, I understand a little bit about this, a little, this stuff a little bit more than you. Like when my man... Was talking about the uh, he was telling y'all about a horse and a shank and y'all in this story when he's trying to put the Bible in, and then I'm laughing like these people ain't been to prison. Maybe a couple of y'all been to prison, but he's telling y'all about prison life and all this. And I'm laughing like crazy. Like I look at Mike, I said, I don't know what he's talking about, man. <laughs> 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 but listen, understand this. God saves sinners and he uses the most unusual suspects. You know why? Because he can get the glory out of it. You, you, you know, our problem is, is we want to take credit for what God is doing. 
You, God, you, don't you want, why did I mention that man? Say how, how, how great of, how much influence I had in your life. Yeah, I, I don't care nothing about that. I want, you know what I want to do? I want to sit back and watch you grow in grace and not to Jesus Christ. And I say, oh yeah, get him, baby. Get him. <laughs> Stick the knife in him. I don't want to take credit. I want to see God do something in your life. But if God's going to do something in your life, it's going to have to be, and you're going to have to be doing it under the auspice of his power, his declarative power, which is marvelous, which is, un, which is undeniable, and he is the architect of the universe. You hear these goofy, uh, uh, you, I can't even think of the name of these people that worship themselves. We were the grand architect. I say his name is the Lord Jesus Christ, you idiot. <laughs> it's Masons. And he says, well, you know, if I told you to see teachings, I would have to kill you. I said, you, you can't bust a grape. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you can barely read and talk about the secret teachings. I said, I already read the book, goofball. <laughs> God, is the God is the greatest and the grandest architect of anything. Yeah. The God of the Bible. It's not like Buddha, it ain't Confucius, it ain't Allah, it's a real rock God. And if you got a plant God or a flower God, or if you're your God, or your church is your God, or your pastor is your God, or your car is your God, it's your church is your God, you got a little G God, he a little fella. Listen, and you know what we say about little fellas? Little fellas get in their little fella car. Get over there with the little fellas. God didn't save you to do little fella stuff. Every individual in here, every, you're just as important as the next person. Whatever God calls you to do are big things that he wants you to do. I don't care if it's clean. I don't care if it's cleaning a car. Whatever God calls you to do, he's going to use you in that manner. I don't care if, where, where is he at? Where is he at? Where's the kitchen captain at? Where's he at? Right here. I, I don't care. If you're the captain of the kitchen, I, listen, your little thing that you had on your last night, I liked it that, baby. Listen. <laughs> hey, I, listen, you think I'm playing. I was about to say, that's how you feel? That's what I was about to say. That's how you feel? I like that. Listen, whatever you do, do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's get into some more of these verses. The Bible says there's no such, there's no speech, nor language, which their, their voice is not heard. Their line is going out through all the earth and their words in the end of the world are in the, are in the end of the world. Excuse me. Psalms 19 and verse four, which is as the bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoice of as the strong man to a race. There is rejoicing. In the Lord. Yeah. Listen, the reason you're here on a Sunday morning after you've been here Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning, and now I'm feeling my voice is going. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This is the book of Shelby. Quick, a quick little quip. Shelby tells Brother G, you got to go get him because he ain't going to stop. <laughs> hey, that's... Brother Mike, that's what we do, right? We don't believe in one light, two light, three lights. We just go. <laughs> when I go out the street preach, I'm going to preach, man. I'm trying to get as many people under the sound of the gospel, much Bible up under them as possible. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to take the, the, uh, the pull of wool from under their feet, whatever they trusted in as much as possible. I want them to go home and say, <laughs> You're not going to believe what happened to me today. Some little, some little black boy was on the corner and he was screaming that Bible at me. Who is he? Who gave him the right to do it? Honey, go get my Bible. And someday in heaven, some guy, some guy gonna say, man, I wanted to kill you when I seen you on the court of the street preaching, but I got saved. Yeah. That's the truth. Amen. 
that's the truth. Uh, let's talk a little bit about rejoicing and, and glorifying God. Turn to Psalms uh, 40, Psalm 150. Psalm 150. Your voices should be praising the Lord. Psalms 150 said, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. That's what you should hear. You should be praising him. Praise him in the firmament of his power. And for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound, with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything, not some, not part, not, not some part, some things, have things, are part of things, are eight of things. The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You should always be praising the Lord. The reason you have a voice. It's to praise the Lord. Amen. It's not so somebody can hear your opinion. <laughs> and I have rights. I don't care about your rights. You know why? Because most of the time people talking about they got rights, they're excluding your rights. They're not really considering your rights. When they tell you, you, tell, you can't tell me about, you're forcing Jesus Christ down my throat. I says, and so they ain't forcing uh, uh, what you say? Where do you start? Uh, yeah, well, we've seen a couple of signs here. <laughs> I would say 420 signs. That's what, that's what California calls it, 420. Yeah, yeah. They're forcing that down your throat. They're forcing <laughs> McDonald's down your throat. They're forcing Burger King down your throat. They're forcing everything they possibly can down your throat. Yes. If you watch any YouTube or anything, I guarantee you, you will see a sodomite commercial. Yeah. Yeah. It's more acceptable to be a sodomite. Listen, stop trying to pr stop praying that God saved the country. God, this country is going to hell in a handbasket. Our focus should be to see as many folk get saved, as many folk get in, as many folk get. Where, where's that? Where's that? Where's the crown thing? Where's that crown? Oh, I love it. Oh, give it to me, sister. Yeah. Yeah. You should be trying to get as many of these as possible. I, no, I love this thing. I'm sitting in there like, I'm sitting there in my seat like, they throwing crowns out there. I like that. I don't know who I did is. I don't care who I did is. I just stole it. We're going to go to my church and we're going to sing crown them with many crowns and we're going to throw crowns at the church. I love it. I, 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 let me stop. <laughs> Brother, listen, I, did, did, let me tell you why this is a blessing. See, I, I, I've been at white churches. <laughs> but I've never been in a multicultural church with Korean or I, I, I'm not, don't let me butcher what you are. I don't get offended. <laughs> If you're a Bible believer, you should not be easily offended. But I've never been there and see, I love to run in the bases. I'm not going to run the base. Because I don't want to hurt myself. But, boy, what did you say, the AARP version? I liked it that. But, listen, I love the way you worship. I love the fact that you ain't worried about nobody caring about or acceptable to somebody else. Yeah. One thing I learned about uh, Bible believers got a problem with trying to tell other folk how to worship. Your worship of God is your worship. It should be biblical. You should have something before, it, but your worship is your worship and God is looking at your heart. Man is looking at the outward appearance. Man don't know what you've been through. I have no clue what your, your, your folk have been through. I don't have no clue what your folk have gone through to get to America, to worship God, to figure be. I don't know if they excluded y'all from having the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you worship in God, I, that baby. Yeah. Worship God how you worship in God. Stop worried about how somebody else is worshiping God. This is a blessing, folk. I'm, I thank you for inviting me.
Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Dave, it's two black folk in here. <laughs> but I have, to, I have to go back, okay. <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. Listen, my family has kicked me out of the houses before too. I came back to visit. You have a whole, the longest, the biggest chapter in the Bible speaks to the Word of God. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Speaks to the Word of God. And if you can't get this thing, something is wrong. Yeah. yeah. There's something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Psalms 119 and verse 1, the Bible said, Blessed are the underfall in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. The Bible says, blessed are the underfall in the way. Listen, there's the way which seem right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's sometimes, there's some ways that seem right that just ain't right. Yeah. But the way is general. Yeah. Yeah. But God will give you. When you get saved, that is your path. Your, your path is to glorify the Lord. But then it becomes a course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Every Christian has an individual course. Amen. You cannot run my obstacle course and say, I made his race, God. Aren't you pleased with it? That's good. Uh -huh. Somebody wanted to take a message to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. He wanted to take a message to David. It wasn't his job to take yes. the message. That's right. He just wanted to be the one to take the message because he wanted to be, yeah. he thought he was going to do something. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 We got it. It cost him something. Yeah. 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 Run your race. Mm -hmm. You better make sure it's your race. It better make sure it's your course. Yes. That's yes. Right. Right. The Bible right. says John finished John, John the baptizer. <laughs> John, John the Baptizer finished his course. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. The Bible talks about Paul finishing his course. Yes, sir. Yes. When you get to heaven at the judgment seat of Christ, then. Mm. Yes. Amen. Get your crown. Amen. That's right. Wow. Hey. Oh, well, he said, no, no, you don't get that one. Oh. Because no. you ran somebody else's race. I told wow. you I'm here. But you said, I was, I, I was in the, the nursery ministry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I didn't want to upset my wife. No. Oh, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I want you to be a grown man. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And if you ain't running your race, you can't possibly love a superior. Oh. You know why can't you can't love a superior? Because you ain't doing, you embarrassed because you're not doing what you're, you're supposed, supposed to do. Yeah. You got it. See this thing? You, you be careful. Yes. By your book. Yes, oh, right. Don't just pick what you like. Mm -hmm. Right. That's good right yeah. there. That's the good. law of the Lord. Talking about this book, this book will do something to you. It'll cut away the fat, yeah. cut away all that garbage, yes. take all that tar out of you, and it takes skin with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you got time, energy, money, and all that junk invested into junk. Yes. Yeah. God ain't told you to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The Bible says the law of the Lord. It's perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Go to the second verse of Psalms 119. The Bible says, blessed are they that keep the testimonies and that seek him with, the, with a whole heart. You know what God don't want? He don't want part of your heart. Right. Yes. He wants the whole thing. Amen. That little compartment that you got closed up, locked up, and you got closed up, and then you put it in that closet, and you lock the keys around it, and you put it on you put all the bricks around it, you put the drywall around it, and you put the nice picture on it. Oh, yeah. And I just walked in the closet like, what's this in here? What's this? What's this? Well, see, I don't want that. He said, I want it all. Yes. God wants you. Your heart. You know what that, you know why people don't read their Bibles? Because yeah, he want too much. Uh, but the truth of the matter, it belongs to you. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says the testimonies. Uh, listen, uh, the te his te it, blessed are they to keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Oh. The Bible says the testimonies of the Lord are shit. This is a certain thing. This ain't no fabricated thing. This ain't no. a thing, uh, 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 figment of your imagination. The testimonies. 
The Bible says in the next verse of Psalms 119 and verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right. Yeah. Go to verse 5, the Psalms 119, verse 5, the Bible says, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy, excuse me, the, oh that thou, excuse me, oh that my ways were directed to yeah. keep thy yeah. statutes. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Amen. That's why you need a preacher to direct you. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Because you know you think you know what you're doing. And, and that's why you need parents too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, if you think you're 17, 18, and you know what you're talking about, and you know what you want to do with your life, you an idiot. Yeah. Oh, amen. 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 You know how I know? Because I used to be him. Yeah. 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 At 18. I'm still him at 50. But yeah. I know what that is. I'm clear about who's the idiot in this conversation. Yeah. yeah. God says, hey, here you go. Hey, Michael, come here, look at this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. We got everything fixed up for him. God, I need a new microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Why haven't you given it to him? He's sitting right here. <laughs> he need to turn around and right in Best of us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's right. His test. His test. His, 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 his command. Verse 6 in Psalms 119, the Bible says, Shall I not be ashamed, but I have respect unto all thy commands. You know what it lends itself to? You don't gotta, when you, you know when you're doing something God's way, you don't have to be ashamed. You know what they start saying? When you believe your Bible, when you know you got your Bible, it's the arrogant. I can't stand it. Uh -huh. That's what they say. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember people said, I'm arrogant and all that. There's something in there, but this, it ain't about this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It ain't about this. You just mad because I know the Bible. I don't, yeah. care what you think. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what you think. If it's not Bible and if it's not God, if God didn't use you to direct me to help me to further give me further revelation of what He's already showed me in the Bible, what the preacher already preached from the pulpit, what we already prayed about, and all of that, I, I don't care what you think. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, brother. You know, a lot of people in here have got themselves in trouble worried about what somebody else thought. Yes. Uh -huh. right. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. 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 Trouble trying to appease somebody when you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was the stupidest thing in the world. Yeah. And then you sit here, like I told you, I, was, I, I remember I had a buddy, we, I was just talking to him. And we, we, he, we was in a fair joint together. He said, Man, I ain't never thought nothing wrong. I said, You idiot. We was in the fair joint 30 years ago, looking at each other like bumps on the wall. And he was like, That was a long time. <laughs> Because he knew I wanted to punch him in the side. Because <laughs> me and my friends, we'll, we'll just fight. But we, we, we go, we'll fight and this will be over with. Yeah. We're not holding them grudges. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. You know, Christians should be the same way. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, that's a lesson there. Mm. Well, this book, man, this book will give you purposeful direction. Yeah. 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 Purposeful direction. Yeah. Yeah. Even when you don't understand everything, and there's some things that you knew when you understood, you read in your Bible and said, I don't know why God's telling me to do it, but just because God descended to do it, I would do it. And then guess what? Five years down the line, you figure out that more clarity comes, more light comes. Yeah. 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 That was the right thing to do, even yeah. though I didn't know I was doing it. Mm -hmm. right, right. This book will give you purposeful direction. Amen. If you're going to pick a man, I say it all the time, you need to have Bible. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Bible verses. It helped. It helped. Yes. It helped. It helped. It helped. You listen. Listen to me. God gave me a wife. I didn't pick her. God gave me. Amen. Yeah. And the only Amen. reason I still have have a wife today is because of God. It, it, Amen. We've been married 17 years. Yes. To the day yesterday. Amen. Now listen to me. Listen to me. We're not married because. I'm a fine enough citizen. Now she got fine enough citizenship in her family, but I reject it. All right. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have that in my family. But listen to me, we're married because of Jesus Christ. Yeah. God gave me a wife. Yes. Yeah. I didn't pick her. 
-hmm. Stop saying, well, I think I should. No, if it ain't in the Bible, if she ain't virtuous, prudent, and gracious, that's that's gracious that's 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 and uh, she ain't a wife when you find her, she ain't a wife. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You heard what I said. If she's oh, yeah. a hood rat when you find her, she's a hood rat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa, right.
the Bible says, uh, Psalms 119, 130, is my eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. It reroutes your habits. It changes things in your life. It's right. You're not caught up in all those things. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I need to do something. I, I, uh, I, I'm holding this. Yeah. I want to get back. I, want, I like this righteousness. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I've been I was in Hope, and I would bring people to church, and I would, we would sit behind the teens, and I was like, what you see? I, I always said, what did it feel like when you came to the door? He said, man, it's different. Come to the door here. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, yeah, oh, that's good. And when we sit down, I let them see the teens, and you see all these clean kids that ain't been in the world, and they do it. I said, what you see? He said, man, it's something different. I said, they're clean. Uh, yep. yeah. 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 It take your desires and change them like wow. yeah, I want something different. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. I want something different. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. The, this book rejoices the heart. Psalms 115. I mean, uh, uh, let, let me look. Uh, I mean, uh, wait. Amen. Amen. I, I, no, I, I'm sorry. Psalms 19. <laughs> Psalms 19. Uh, Psalm 19, the Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies are sure. It's making wise and simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Listen, God, this book rejoices your heart. It'll change some things. Yeah. Well, Listen, how many times you've been down and you ain't want to read your Bible and you yes. read your Bible and oh. after you read your Bible, you felt like you was on cloud nine? Yeah. Yeah. It rejoices the heart. It'll bring you rejoicing. Listen, I'm telling you, last night when I was watching them, that uh, that testimony. Sir, mm -hmm. amen. Okay, we preachers, right? We from out of town, and I'm, I'm not undermining. <laughs> but to see y'all constantly come up here and talk about how God got you here, yeah, right. and where God got sure, you from, right? That's you know, yeah. And God gave some uh, apostles, prophets. Uh, <laughs> Pastors, teachers, uh -huh, yeah. and all of that for the what? Preparing for the saints. For the work of the ministry. Yeah, sir. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Right. That's what we saw. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I was tired. Yes. In here. But that was a blessing. Yes, yes. Amen, brother. Yes, it was. This in the Bible says that words were found and I did eat them and yes. that word was with me, the joy oh, and rejoicing of mine heart. Yes. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts, it rejoices the heart. That's what the Bible does. Amen. Yes, amen. The Bible requires holiness. Take your Bible in 2 Peter chapter 1. Amen. It requires holiness of you. This is why folks don't want to read that book. This yes. is why they don't want to be in yeah. that book. Mm -hmm. That's why they, they that's why they enjoy calling themselves liberals. They, you can't uh -huh. it don't even make no sense. Yeah. That's right. All you gotta do is say, would you like your daughter to be liberal with her uh, with her uh, purity? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guess what they'll do? They'll ball their hand up and act like they ready to fight you. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, come on. That's sad. Uh, yes, they will. Right. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, I'm a liberal. You are an idiot. The Bible says, Wherever are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. You know, we stop when we read that verse. We just stop right there. We turn on. Oh, wait, yeah, God's given us exceeding great and precious promises. God is Lord. The Bible says that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Yes. The divine nature yes. of who? God. Having, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust, it requires holiness to be in this book. Yes. It takes Say it all the time. Where I'm at, you may not. I, listen, I know a lot of people. I can cut dudes. I can play around with this book. I can cut you up, and we can do all of that sport fight. I ain't interested in it. Yeah. 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 It means nothing. You're not. You're not edifying nobody. You're just trying to say, yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say that. Got it. yeah. 
Right. Nobody cared nothing about that. Who did you lead to the Lord? Yes. Where they're at. Uh -huh. Amen. Let me see the fruit. The fruit. Yeah. And let me see what they did, what you gave them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. And we, see, we ain't talking about, I got a couple of, I let some people to what how many, how many, how many grandkids and great grandkids? Okay, okay. Yeah. That's it. You know the Bible says to the fourth and fifth generation. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, you want a spiritual fourth and fifth generation? Mm -hmm. Sir. Sure. Yeah. You know what's wrong with the black community? Mm -hmm. Ten generations of Nothing of ignorance, ignorant of the righteousness of God. And you have, we was talking about it, you know, you have people who tell you, uh, this is how you're supposed to do it. There's no fruit around you. You know, when you got, when you're fruitful, it's, it's going to be some fruit just hanging the day around. You know, and, and if you ain't got no fruit, you know, you know, there's nectar. You know what nectar is? Mm. That those taste of those sweetness. There, there's something you have no nectar whatsoever, mm. and you want to tell somebody about doing something for real. Mm. I, I'm not interested. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. when you dealing with people like that, you got to take the onion, you got to peel the onion, mm. a layer, uh -huh. after layer, after layer, after layer, then you could drop something. Mm. Yeah. That's what it is. That's good. Yeah. Amen. People think that I, I understand. I know what I'm doing. I took all the right classes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and I'll say it all the time. I love him too. I love the old man too. Yes. Amen. Amen. I love him too. Good. Amen. But he don't know nothing about my community. Mm. He don't know nothing about your community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. You better follow the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You better stay in this book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This book remains our. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bible in Psalm 119 says the law of the Lord is perfect. Converted so the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord mm -hmm. are right, rejoice in the heart. And the commandments of the Lord are pure and light in the eye. Enlightening the eyes. Mm -hmm. It remains our. Mm -hmm. Take your Bible, turn up. Uh, uh, I think it's Matthew 24. Matthew 24. This book ain't going nowhere. Yeah. yeah. That's this right. book, can, I love that. I like that song. We uh, leave it alone. Yeah. 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 I like that. What, they wrote it in. What you, brother, what did you say? Yeah, they wrote it in RSB. Um, uh, year 18, version. 18, oh, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, you read it, man. Amen. Uh, first, I'm in Judge 25, it's 24. The Bible, Psalms, I mean Proverbs, I mean Matthew. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry, Shelby. Matthew 24, verse 35, the Bible says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words yeah. shall yeah. not yeah. pass yeah. away. Yeah. Listen, when you listen, when you get to heaven, you're going to be judged by this yeah. book. So when people say, I don't need that Bible. Oh, you absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Only God can judge me. Well, you need a Bible, but Yeah. Is yeah. he not judging you about that little fictional novel or, or whatever, yeah. your, whatever, you know, biopic you just watched or whatever, you know. Oh. Uh, you know what, what it, documentary. I mean, I watched the documentary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said, you know your life is boring. <laughs> so if they did a story about your life, they got to add some spices, and some flavor. They got to yeah. skip over. And most, most, more likely than not, it's going to be the very thing that defines who you really are. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But that's boring. Mm -hmm. You will get judged by this book. Yeah. This book refutes heresy. And we're going to stop there and go to Psalms, Isaiah, 30, Isaiah chapter 34. Good preaching, brother. Yeah. This, uh, I'm going to read Isaiah 34 and Isaiah 35 because this, this got something to do with this. The Bible, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Mm -hmm. no, one of these, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate, for my mouth it, my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit hath gathered them. The Bible says, read this book, it shall not fail. 
Yeah. Now go to 35. I had to read that because it was right there. So I'm saying. The Bible says, Thus saith the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you. But Isaiah 35, 14, Thus saith the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. You know what folk trying to tell you? Don't believe his book. Don't believe his prophet. Don't believe your preacher. Who said that though? They don't listen to the preacher. Uh -huh. Listen to me. You know the world's always trying to tell you. When the news comes on, it says, Yeah, I read this right. Peter and whatever. Yeah. We're, we're, we're on time or whatever. Yes, they're right. all right. Amen. You're right. You're right. And you know what they put on TV? TV what gets views. That's okay. right. That's it. Exactly. You got it. I was in the lady house. The lady says, you don't have no, uh, you don't have any, uh, no, uh, no recommendations on your website. <laughs> Google reviews. I said, man, <laughs> you do realize that Google is an algorithm. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. I said, you do realize that you could Google can and get mad, a man get pregnant. And the first answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I yeah. know that we us things make our decisions off of Google. Oh. So you need reviews. Okay. People trust Google instead of Google. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Now yeah. she was right, I do need some reviews. <laughs> Yeah. 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 The Bible says, Hearken not unto Hezekiah, but thus saith, The king of Israel make an agreement with me by a press. Hold it. You know, you know how people try to soften you up? Yeah. By giving you a press. Now, yeah, I see. that's some of you folk need to be giving people presents. Mm -hmm. Because you know the Bible says a friend show off himself friend. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. just ain't friend. Yeah. So you will have to buy some of your friends. <laughs> A steak dinner. Start with a steak dinner. You might have to get some. You might get some friends. <laughs> but listen, on a, on a, a serious note, uh -huh. when people keep trying to bribe you to line up with them, mm -hmm. it's foolish. Yeah. yeah. The Bible says they eat ye every one of his. One of his vine and every one of his fig tree and drink he every one of the waters of his own sister. If he wanted to drink all the waters of their own sister, why would you take them away from their own sisters? Yeah. Listen to what people tell you when they're trying to convince you to line up to line up with them. Mm -hmm. It says, until I come and take you to a land of your uh, like your own. Mm -hmm. Like your own. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. You're already living. Hmm. And a land of corn and wine, and a land of bread and vineyards. Beware of the kind of persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Take it by a certain prophet, chapter 2. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, My son, if thou wilt receive my words yeah. and hide my commandments with thee, yeah. not with your name. Not with your cousin, yeah. not with your group, not with your family, but with me. This is it. It is personal. Amen, brother. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible in Psalm 19 and verse. 21, Psalms 19 and verse 9 says, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need the fear of the Lord. If you want to do something for the Lord, you need the fear. Yeah. And if you spend time in this book, mm -hmm. where Bible believes, mm -hmm. it will cause you to fear God. It will yes. cause you to yeah. see God yeah. who He is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, folks, I listen, I'm not nobody special. Uh, I'm just trying to do what God told me to do. And my desire is for you to love this. Book. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. Hey, if you love this book, you will love your preacher. Yeah. Yeah. If you love this book, you will love. Listen, when you love the book and you love Christians, uh -huh. you love the place where they come together. Wow. That's church. That's yeah. good, brother. Yeah. Yeah. And when you 
start loving church, you will start, this is my church. You hate this is your church. Uh -huh. This is Sunday morning. This is your church. Yes. You need to love your church. Yes. yes. Amen. I don't care what somebody will say what they do. This is your church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You love your church. You love when you go to church at. Amen. You love your church. Mm -hmm. You love the folk. Listen. People will come here and the first thing they want to know is you love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When they come here, they want to know that you love. That's good. Yes. That's what they want to know. Yes. Amen. The Bible says God is love. Yeah. Amen. If you ain't in this book, yes. you have no understanding of what love is. Yeah. Absolutely Amen. right. Amen. You need to fall in love with this book. Let's pray. Come on. Amen. 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 The altar call is open. The altar call is open. The pastor for such a <laughs> Sunday Bible study hour covered so much where it all relates to that book. That book. He gave you a lot of stuff in there that all related to that book.
Uh, thank you for that preaching there, uh, Pastor Rudolph. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's always it's always good it's always good to to, to hear hear stuff we need to hear. Even though a lot of us know a lot of these things already, it's, it's good to be reiterated. You know the, the truth. You know sometimes we just don't want to hear it. Sometimes we don't want to do what the Bible says. Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, and do what we can. And all we can do is, uh, oh yeah, by the way, go 721, 721. All we can do is hold the floor. Let's go on the offensive yes, right now. 715. Same uh same medley. So melody's gonna be the same. Amen.
Who is watching yeah. for yeah. the signal of a grand Yeah. Who is ready for the onset? Who is born of war? Storm the form for that's the signal. seated. Pastor Knowles, one more shot, sir. Make it good. Amen. Amen. Open your hearts to what the Holy Spirit's trying to lead him. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Pastor, as My always. Pleasure. It's been an honor, sir, to have you for the past Amen. couple of years. Thank you. It's been my honor. Thank you. Thank you. And I do mean that, and I am very happy that you have me return. It means a lot to me. And this church is so good and been so gracious to us and so merciful and uh, kind and taking care of us. I want to thank every one of you. Every one of you for your attentiveness, just your sacrifice. Now I do pray. I do pray the Lord blesses you and blesses this church. And I pray that... Uh, and I know, I know, gain is not godliness. But I hope he'll give you some gain. I do. I hope he'll give you some gain just for being, being faithful and doing what you're supposed to do. And I want to say this, and then we're going to get going with it. I've enjoyed all the preaching. I need preaching. The older I get, I enjoy hearing good preaching as much as I enjoy doing it. Because the older I get, I realize that I need it more. When you're a young preacher, you can't wait for everybody to hear you because you think you got the goods. And when you, when you get older, you know you ain't got the goods. And you need, you need God to do something for you. And so you listen. But I, I want to say my favorite part of the whole thing, man, was the testimony service last night. Really. You... Not a preacher. Yes. Not a preacher. You yeah. minister to me. Yeah. Mean it. Mean it. All right. You know how I am. So let's get it on. Go, go ahead and get your Bibles out. Now I want you to stand and stretch your feet and get your Bibles out. And we're going to turn to a very familiar passage this morning. And that's Philippians chapter 1. Now, if you haven't been saved very long, this may not be familiar to you. Or if you've come in here today and you're lost, and I hope you'll leave here saved. Uh, this may not be familiar to you. But if you've been a Bible believer any length of time, you've heard a message on this, and or you know, or you're familiar with at least part of these scriptures, maybe all of them. And uh, so we're going to preach from Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 20. And we'll begin reading at verse number 20, and then we'll read down to verse number 26 this morning. From Philippians chapter 1, verse number 20, and we'll read down to verse number 26. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always... So now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Brother Hilton Smith, would you please pray for me and the message and everybody can be seated. Father, we thank you, Lord, you allow us together one more time. Yes. Lord, you said you have chosen the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yes. Yes. I ask you, God, to put your hands upon Brother Knowles. And Please. And to preach from this book, from his heart. Yes. Please. God, did you have us to open up our ears to the understanding that you have to have. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. 
name. For his sake, Lord. Amen. 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 All right, you can be seated this morning. I want you to notice that in verse number 20, Paul states that Christ would be magnified in his body, whether he lived or he died. Now, how is that? Verse number 21 explains it. Paul tells you, he says, if I live, I'm going to live for Christ. And if I die, it's going to be gain because I'm going to go be with Christ. Either way, Paul was a winner. And if you're saved, whether you live or die, you're a winner. Yes. It's that old song we sing, I'm a winner either way, whether I go or whether I stay. Yes. You're a winner either way if you're in Christ. Amen. And then we get to verse number 22 this morning. Paul states that he doesn't know what to choose, but his personal desire is to die and be with Christ. Notice verse number 23. He said, I'm in a strait betwixt two. He said, I have a desire to depart. That's my desire and be with Christ, which is far better. And folks, let's just be honest. Many times we feel like Paul, don't we? We wish for the Lord to return or just to take us on home because life is so hard. Life does get hard sometimes. The trials and the struggles of life just wear you out, don't they? They just wear you out. We as children of God know we have a perfect place to go. And we have a loving Savior to live with forever. So let's think about what Paul said. Why do you think that Paul would desire to depart and be with Christ. Well, a couple of things. We know this. We know that Paul suffered much. Yeah. Acts chapter 9, Paul is saved on the Damascus Road. And in that same chapter, in verse number 16, Jesus tells Ananias that he's going to show Paul how great things he must suffer for his name's sake, for my name's sake, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was beaten, he was stoned, he was persecuted, he was rejected, he was eventually put to death. There's a whole list of that stuff. If you have time, you could take your Bible and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and go from verse 24 to 28 and it will tell all of the hard, difficult things that Paul went through. Yes. He bore the marks of the persecutions for Jesus Christ in his body. But he didn't just bear it in his body. I'm sure it was in his mind yeah. and in his heart. Yes. And anyone who suffered as Paul would want to go be with the Lord. Yes. Secondly, he knew what he was missing. Amen. Remember that according to 2 Corinthians 12, Paul had been caught up into paradise. Yes. He got an early glimpse of glory. And I'll tell you this, if any of us ever got a good glimpse of heaven, brother, we sure wouldn't want to come back. Remember that Paul was stoned and he was left for dead in Iconium. You read about that in Acts chapter 14. And that may be when we believe that possibly that he, when he did go to heaven, he went to the third heaven. And that's maybe, maybe, I can't say this with any degree of certainty, but maybe, maybe it was a thing when he was up there then that the Lord said, you want to go back? You can, you can stay or you can go back. Wow. How about that, brother? And he doesn't know what to do. You see, listen to me now. Paul was a spiritual man. So whenever it was up in heaven, down on earth, it doesn't make a difference to the sermon. He made a right decision. And it wasn't the decision that he craved. Verse number 25. Having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you. He decided that he wanted to stick around. His decision was pro-life. Yeah. <laughs> and you and I ought to be pro-life. And I'm not talking about we got enough sense to know you don't kill babies. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 We ought to be satisfied to stay here as long as we possibly can. The title of my message this morning is Paul the Pro-Lifer. Wow. Come on, preacher. This yes, Paul was pro-life before there was an issue. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, listen now, I'm going to give you just a few reasons right here from the text why Paul chose to stick around. And I want you and I to see why we need to stick around as long as we can. 
Verse number 21. Here's the first one. <laughs> Paul was a pro-lifer because he said, for me to live is Christ. He says that in verse number one, for me to live is Christ. Now, folks, I want you to listen to me. We only get one lifetime to live as a Christian. And our eternal existence, ever how far you can reach out and what eternity is, only that much of it, that much of it is here on the earth. And we have the same spiritual relationship to Jesus Christ Anyway, whether we live or whether we die, 1 Thessalonians 5.10, it says, who died for us, speaking about Christ, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Amen. That's good. But once we're up there with him, the one opportunity that we have in our eternal existence to live for Christ is gone. Yeah. Do you realize this is the only time in I have a chance to live by faith. Yes, sir. In your eternal existence, this is the only time in your eternal existence where you have an opportunity to live by faith and just show God that you totally, 100% trust Him and His Word over your emotions, over the stinking news, over the way the gas prices are going and inflation and everything else. Amen. Listen, folks, you can buy all the gold bars you want to when God shuts this thing down. Matter of fact, I read a thing over there that's going to happen in the tribulation period when he turns to gold radioactive. You ever read that over there in James? It's going to burn you. It's going to burn you. This is our only time in our Christian existence where we have a chance to grow spiritually. We're going to have a mind like Christ. We're going to be perfect once we get up here. But this is the only time we have a pilgrimage yeah. to see Christ bring us along the way. Yes. Yeah. This is the only time we have him, we have is on the earth to see him change our heart. Yeah. And for us to have, this is our only time us to have a chance to deny ourselves for him and stop doing those things we really want to do just because we love him. This is the only time in our eternal existence but we will be able to live a life where we see Christ pull us out of some unbelievable circumstances. This is the only time that we have it because in eternity we're, ever, we're forever going to be changed. This is your only chance that you have to sacrifice for Him. Right now, if you're going to sacrifice for Christ, if you're going to give of yourself for Christ, I don't care what it is. It makes no difference to me. You need to find out what God's asking you to do. Yes. Is it money? Mine. Is it time? Is it effort? Is it work? Is it... Um, maybe uh, cause yourself some persecution and some mocking just because of your stand for the Lord. Well, let me tell you what I know. Let me tell you what I know for every one of us. I don't care if you're from Michigan, Alabama, Tennessee, out here in California, it doesn't matter. When, we, when, you, when they put us to bed with a shovel, yeah. And we're going to get put to bed with a shovel unless the Lord comes back. Amen. And we go and stand before him, it's finished. Yeah. The, the, the opportunity to show Christ that he means more to you than your own selfish desires is forever over. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, are you going to man up or woman up right now and do it, or you're never going to do it? That's right. Amen. And that's why we ought to be a pro-lifer. Yeah. We ought to say, okay, I want to stick around as long as you want me to. Wow. I want you to give me more opportunities to suffer for you. Yeah. Boy, that's a hard prayer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But it's the right prayer. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't make, <laughs> listen, I may not always live up to what I preach. I may not always do everything that I preach. But if it's right, it's right. Yes, amen. And the right thing would be for me and you to drop down our knees to say, today and say, Lord, allow us the privilege to suffer for you. Amen. Because this is the only time in my eternal existence where I will have that privilege so yeah. to suffer for you. Number two, 
Not only should you be a pro-lifer like Paul was because to, he said to live as Christ. Number two, so you can produce fruit and earn rewards. That's what he said, verse number 22. But if I live in the flesh, this the fruit, the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. Paul said, if I live in the flesh, it's going to be the fruit of my labor. Listen, we, listen. you ought to live and be a pro-lifer and want to stay here as long as you can because this is the only time we have in our eternal existence to labor and produce fruit for God. You ought to want to live so you can serve God and even bear more fruit. Yeah. Yes. More fruit and much fruit. 30, 60, and 100. Do you realize that you can, where's these, all these crowns? Here, here's one. <laughs> Listen to me. You say, Paul's a pro-lifer, all right? You, you're telling me I ought to be a pro-lifer, yeah. All right? We, this right here is just a little bitty glimpse simulation of what the real thing's going to be. And we're all, getting, we're all getting excited and throwing them down here on the earth and throwing them at the pulpit and throwing them at one another. Okay. Okay. Help yourself. That don't mean you're going to have one up in heaven to throw. Throw them all you want to. I don't care. Get the galls out. Try to hit somebody in the head with it. <laughs> Means nothing to me one way or the other. But listen, listen. In my eternal existence and in your eternal existence, I've got one lifetime to get a real one to cast at his feet. One. One. One lifetime. And when I'm dead and gone, I have no opportunity to do anything about my reign in the millennium, to do anything about my inheritance that's a part of the inheritance that's involved in what I do for him, or any, any work wow. to be put through the fire. <laughs> you should want to earn rewards to glorify Jesus Christ. Amen. The question is, will you die an empty-handed Christian? I think of a song, and it may be in this song book, because that book is well, the thickest song book I have ever seen. <laughs> Besides it being a great song book with a multiple array of songs, it'd be a good weapon if somebody broke in here. Because <laughs> that thing's big and heavy. But there's an old song. Have any of you ever heard the song, Must I Go and Empty Handed? Yes. Yes. Uh, that's written by a fellow named Charles Luther in 1877. And Charles Charles Luther writes this song from a story that of a young man uh, he was aware of, of a young man who was dying and he was very young and he had only been saved about a month and this is what that young man said he said I'm not afraid to die Jesus saves me now but must I go and empty handed and so Luther writes this song a few of the lyrics must I go and empty handed thus my dear redeemer meet not one day of service give him. Lay no trophy at his feet. Second verse. Not at death I shrink nor falter, for my Savior saves me now. But to meet him empty-handed, thought of that now clouds my brow. All the years in sin wasted, could I but recall them now, I would give them to my Savior, to his will I'd gladly bow. O oh, ye saints, arouse, be earnest, up and work while yet tis day. Ere the night of death overtake thee, strive for souls while still you may. In the chorus, must I go and empty handed? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul will wish to greet him. Must I empty handed go? And some of you, possibly here today, are listening to me. You're you're going to heaven. You just have saved anybody in here. But you're going empty handed. You're not going to have a barbed wire crown to throw at his feet. You know why? Because you didn't follow up on that first point. You've got one lifetime to deny yourself and, and suffer for his name's sake. Just one. That's why you ought to be a pro-lifer. All right, number three. Number three. Why did Paul say, I choose life? I choose to live as long as I can. 
for the need of the people. Look there in verse number 23. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Yes, it is. But notice what he says. Nevertheless, yeah. to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Yeah. Listen to me. We ought to want to live as long as we can so that we can help others. That's why Paul wanted to stay. He said it's needful for you. We have gotten so selfish in this country. Yes. We just pull the shades down and we're just so introverted yes. and staying away from society. And it's just, and we would never say this with our mouth. We're too sanctified to say it. But the truth is how we feel in our heart many times is I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Don't bother me to hell with you. Did that shock you? Come on, brother. Why should it shock you? I just got enough guts to say it. Ah, come on, preach. You live it. Yeah. You think it. That's right. Don't bother me. I'm too busy. Okay? You too busy? Just a few seconds or minutes after you and I die, we're going to go, oh God. Okay, listen, I'm not preaching to you. I believe I'm going to have it too. I believe I'm going to have a realization after I die. I, I messed it. I missed it. I messed up. Why didn't I do better here? Why didn't I try more here? Why wasn't I more concerned here? But you and I, we ain't going back, brother. We're not going back. And if you're ever going to think about somebody besides yourself, now is the time we must do it. And that's why verse number 25 then records his decision. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all. He said, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to stay with you for the need of the people. It's our selfishness that causes us to think about ourselves and look at my suffering. And I know there's some people in here that suffered greatly. And I don't want to minimize it. And some of us have said, well, you know, I just want to die and go and be with the Lord. And I understand that. I have been there. Others should always, though, come before us. And I just want to say this. Often Bible believers talk so much about how we are looking for the blessed hope. That's doctrinally correct. We want the Lord Jesus Christ to return. That's doctrinally correct. We're excited about him coming back. That's doctrinally correct. But you are spiritually wrong because you only want him to come back to alleviate your suffering. Yes, You never get excited about him coming back so he can end some, maybe a little bit of end sin and maybe a little bit that he gets what's his and maybe he restores this planet the way it's supposed to be. But your main excitement is I'm tired, I'm suffering, I'm hurting, I'm in pain. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out of here just as quick as I can go. I know that because I have those same selfish thoughts. I know it. But that's not the reason we should want the Lord to come back. That's the wrong reason. That's the selfish reason. Matter of fact, we should say, Lord, I, I, don't, I, don't, want to, I don't want to say not to come back. But ever how long you take before you come back and how many years you give me to live, I'm going to try to be a help to somebody else. Right. We ought to try to stick around and win our family to the Lord. Yeah. Yes. We ought to want to win our lost friends to the Lord, win our co-workers to the Lord. And most of all, which is the main context of verse number 24, which is why resolves in his heart he's going to stay, is to minister to Christians. Which is, that is the main context. Listen, folks. We have gotten so selfish and so soft that we can't think spiritually right because we have grew up in a society that says yes. don't hurt, yes. don't suffer. Okay? Absolutely. You got a headache, take some pills. Yeah. Did you go out and eat food you shouldn't have ate and you just ate till you so bloated? You can't even walk around. You don't walk around with a stomach ache because you're a glutton, take some medicine. 
Dr drink some Alox. Everybody all right? I'm just telling you the truth. Uh, yeah, you, are. you just on TV and on the internet and everywhere. A pill fix it. A pill fix it. Don't you, don't you, man, turn the air conditioning down. I don't care if you have to take out to pay your bill. You shouldn't be hot. You shouldn't be cold. You shouldn't be uncomfortable. You shouldn't be in pain. You shouldn't suffer. You go to India the streets in so many of those uh, cities in, in the country of India. Tell, tell them that. Yeah. Tell them that in some of these South American countries, some of these uh, countries in Africa. Tell them that. Tell them that. But, hey man, they don't have the means to stop their suffering. Yeah. Come on. But you and I as Americans do. Uh -huh. And it makes our heart cold and insensitive to the real sufferings of people. And it makes us more concerned about stopping our suffering than somebody else's. And that makes us terrible. And I'll raise my hand. That makes us terrible Christians. Terrible Christian. So then all you think about and I think about is I just want to go to heaven. I just want to get out of this mess. Yeah. And when you go, who are you leaving in it? In his own good time. Listen, when the Lord decides to return, he won't be a second late and he won't be a second too soon. And you can predict all your stuff and preach all your stuff and make you some more videos and it don't matter. He's going to come when he wants to. You're not going to hurry him and you're not going to uh, 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 make him stay, okay? But in the meantime... We ought to want to go as long as we can and put up with as much as we got to put up with because that's what we're put here. Listen, we're, we're, we were creative. We were created for his pleasure. Now, let me ask you something. Do you think we bring more pleasure to God by doing right once he's made us perfect? Or do we bring more pleasure to God when we're very imperfect and live in a sinful body? And it is a struggle and a work to think right yeah. and to do right and to talk right. Listen, man, I'm all for eternity too, but do you realize I'm, I'm showing you from the Bible there are a few things that and how you can do for the Lord and for others, you're never going to have an opportunity to do that once you graduate from this world to eternity. You got to do that right now. Right now. And then finally, he wanted to stay around to help, not just help people, but to help other Christians more specifically, you see in the passage, grow spiritually. Verse number 25, and having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for what? Your furtherance and joy of faith. Furtherance. Going on further, going on out yonder. That's a saying we say in the south where I'm from. Go out yonder. You say, where's out yonder? Out yonder could be a multitude of places, but it's just farther on. <laughs> go out yonder. <laughs> My granddad used to say, go over yonder and get to so-and-so. I'm like, only he knows what yonder means. <laughs> but I knew, I, knew, I knew this, brother. I better start walking. <laughs> I better get to walking. <laughs> Paul said, I'm going to abide and continue with you for your furtherance of the faith. You know what Paul's desire was? He wanted to help the Philippians grow in the Lord. I've seen that desire in your pastor. He is so desirous to see you, not just to get saved, but he wants you to grow in the Lord. And he spoke of the loneliness and he spoke of the trials and he spoke of the heartache of losing people and he spoke of the problems with COVID and trying to get another building. And I do remember the time when you lost your voice and were sick, all the things that he, he's went through. But he would absolutely confess to you that they are all worth it. Because he cares for you. Do you care for somebody else? Do you say, I'm a pro-lifer. I, I, this place is getting so stupid, I don't even recognize it anymore, Lord. But, but I'll tell you what, I'll man, if you'll help me, if you'll, if you'll help me, I'll, I'll man up. 
I'll man up and I'll stay here as long as I can so I can try to be a blessing to somebody else. I'll try to help somebody else. There are Christians out there hurting and they're struggling. And I just, I just want to say something. I mean, Bible believers running around here always quoting about, you know, draw your sword and don't neglect not to draw blood. Did you ever read about the passage in the Bible where he says don't carry a sword? Or do you know why there's a sheath made? Sometimes you ought to put the thing up. It ain't always time to, to storm the village, storm the plains, run everybody through, leave the bodies scattered across the plains and leave. If that's all you think about being a Bible believing preacher, you're stupid. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 There's people hurting. Hurting. And they're tore up, man. And their lives are apart. And they are looking for something. And then once they do get saved, they need somebody there to help put the bomb of Gilead on there. Put some salve on there. I am so glad that the man that helped me to become a Bible believer, um, he was a man that went to PBI. He was actually won the Greek award. Name is Brother Tom Johnson. He preached many years down there in Alabama where I'm from. Very intelligent man. Loved the Lord. He moved to a church in Wing, Alabama, which was in the same county as me. I'd already began pastoring, never preached on the street, didn't know any doctrine, didn't know any dispensational stuff. I graduated from a Southern Baptist college and uh, that man came up to me and he was so kind. He introduced me to street preaching. He introduced me to Dr. Rutman and blowouts and commentaries and all that stuff. Do you know what Brother Tom never one time said to me? Not one time. And I always had a bigger church than him. I always had more people in the world and eyes of the world success. Not one time did he ever look at me and say, you mean to tell me you're a preacher and you don't already know this? You mean to tell me you're a pastor and you've never heard this? No, I haven't heard it. I, I don't know this. Nobody ta- I'm doing the best I can. Will you teach me? Yes. Wow. He did. It's my job to teach others. Yeah, amen. I hope that you are doing the same. That's real good. We're, I'm fixing to get ready to close this. Before I do, I'll read to you along these lines of helping other Christians grow spiritually and taking care of a need. One of my favorite passages that Paul writes is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. If you want to turn there, you can. If you want to just listen to me, I'll, I'll read it to you. But listen, folks. We are supposed to go through trials and sufferings and tribulation. So God can comfort us and help us to get through it. And then we are in, to re- in return to take, take that same comfort and, comfort and help that God gave us and turn around and do it for others. Second Corinthians 1 verses 3 through 6. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Yes, he is. And the God of all comfort. Yes, he is. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Why? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. How? By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and self. Why do I go through these things? So I can come along and encourage somebody else that goes through it. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we all also suffer or whether we be comforted it is for your consolation and salvation God's running us through some things man and, and causing some suffering so we can step up and help others that are hurting and suffering not to reject the world and just worry about ourselves that's good you know what Paul said he said something I could never say yeah He said, damn me and save my people. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Right about that. Do you know a man that had been beaten and went through all he'd been through and he, and it appears to me from the text, I don't want to read something into it that I should, but it appears to me from the text he had an option at some time in his life. You can go or you can stay. 
And the man said, man, I've done everything. I've, I've, I've seen heaven. I can get out of this. I can instantly be in a perfect body. I can be sinless. I can be painless. No, I'm, I'll stay and they can imprison me a few times and lead me to the chopping block, cut my head off. Where I'm writing in my last letter recorded in the Bible to please come before winter and see me if you can because I'm, I'm lonely. I don't know when I'm going to check out. And please, not just the parchments and the yeah. things to read because I'd like to have something to read. But don't you please don't forget that cloak because I'm cold here. But I don't regret being cold. I don't regret going to the chopping block. I don't regret the pain and the suffering. I don't reg reg regret the arthritis and the scars on my back. I chose this. God chose me and I chose this. Because I want to be a help to you. And you know what's sad, Pastor? I'm nothing like them. Saints, one day soon we're going to be out of this mess. Paul knew it, and he actually knew what exactly was for him. Yet he decided to live. And you know what I'm asking you to do here this morning? I'm asking you to live for Christ. Don't just exist. Yeah. Don't just That's exist. Live. Live. Yeah. Man, I'm tired too. I'm tired too. Some of you know this about me. I've given testimony. I've, in the pastorate, I had a nervous breakdown and had to go home for a while. I have my entire life from a young person at times suffered with anxiety, panic attacks, even depression for years. Probably leads back to my childhood. I won't go into that. But listen, I, 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 know, I know what personal agony and suffering is. But now it's the time to do it. Now it's the time to suffer. To conform us into his image. And to help someone else on their way. I want to go home too. And one day I'm going. I'm going to save my loved ones. I'm going to be with my Savior. And, I'm, and my mind for the first time in my life will be permanently fixed. But for right now, I am a pro-lifer. I'm going to do all that I can with this feeble body of mine in this life. And you've heard it before and I'll say it one more time. Only one life and it's soon going to be past. And only what's done for Christ will last. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. I'm going to ask your pastor to come forward. Might need our one chance on this altar, huh? One chance, one life, only one, to live for Him, to do something for Him. Only one life, so soon, will pass, only What's done for Christ will last only one chance, just one chance to do His will and not my own, but Thine will be done. Yes. So give to Jesus all your days it's the only life that pays when you recall you have but one life my my days days just pass
so swiftly. <laughs> Preacher, don't months come and go. Years, years just melt away like new fall of snow. Oh, how I've seen it when I passed it through the years. Spring turns to summer, summer to fall. Autumn brings winter, but then comes the call. Come up hither, be with me. And then it's too late, only one life so soon will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one chance to do his will so give to jesus all your days my depression lord my loneliness the times that i thought you wouldn't answer my prayer the times that i felt like that life wasn't worth living the times that i felt like giving up the times i felt so much pain it's unbearable to bear the times that i just want to run away give to jesus all your days it's the only life that pays when you recall you have but one life one life one life Father, you know, you didn't even have to give us one life. Amen. Amen. You gave me one life to live, <sighs> to serve you, to sacrifice to find happiness and understand the real meaning of the fruits of the Spirit and to revel in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Lord, thank you for this one life that I can give you something when you've given me so much more. I guarantee every single person, they might not be convicted from this message, they might run away and they just don't care, but I promise this, Lord, if any, everyone who is saved in here, when we go to heaven and you show us all that you've given to us in heaven, all the beauty, all the splendor, and all the joy, when we look at our own works in our own hands, we will weep and say, God, this is the only thing I can give to you. And God forbid, majority of us is not even anything at all. With this one frail life, let us blow it all up, Heavenly Father, with our service, our sacrifice, our love for one another, our care for lost souls, and to just live for Thee. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's not the last preaching, by the way. Wow, what a great blowout. <laughs> wow. Thank you, every single one of you preachers, for preaching what God told you to preach. It is not a competition. Amen. And thank you so much for being who you are, not the other preacher. Amen. God has used every single one of you in your own way to minister to us. And it would have, uh, wow, what a blowout. Amen. Wow. Woo. Let's summon our next preacher. Come on, Mike Reagan. Two more hours, brother. <laughs> Woo.
Woo! I'm pumped up. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to take up an offering. This will be just the church offering. I would like for uh, uh, brother, uh, can some brother here check up with the lunch and see if it's all good? But to go, uh, but don't come out that door. Come out the other way. All right. I would like to ask brother Daniel and Jared again, Daniel and Jared again, to take up the Lord's offering for us. Now, this is not to the speakers. This is only to the church. I know uh, there are a number of people here who did not uh, come to the blowout service where we did a love offering for the preachers. We already did that. But if you want to give, make sure. OK, if you want to give only to the blowout preachers, put in the memo. Blowout. Just make it simple. Just write blowout. OK, and then our treasurer will specifically uh, put that aside for our blowout speakers. So I believe you already did the total for the blowout love offering. I want you to include that one there. Then I want to see the total. Now, usually uh, nearly uh, every blowout is we always come up short. So the church makes up for it, which is not a problem on our part. Actually, we love to. If I mean, if you're going to get nine speakers, you know, and you don't have 2000 people, come on, you're going to expect a church, right? So I want to thank you, church, for your sacrificial giving and what we save to give to these people. Okay, so th it is worth it, right? <laughs> it is worth it. It is worth it. So much worth it that we're discontent that we try to have weekend revivals, right? It's worth our savings. Uh, but this is only to the church, all right? Uh, I don't care who you are. Feel free to give. And if you don't want to give, that's fine, too. If you want to give only to the speaker, that's perfectly fine, too. Write down blowout in the memo, all right? All right, Brother Daniel, will you uh, give the prayer for the church offering? Heavenly Father... Thank you, Lord, for being able to be here, Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving us the means and the uh, ability to be here, Lord. Uh, I know it took a lot, took a lot for a lot of people to be here, Lord, financially, uh, work-wise, family, Lord, uh, health. Uh, but we thank you, Lord, that through your power, Lord, that we're able to get here and, and be able to listen to some great preaching, Lord. Amen. Uh, thank you, Father, for, for really filling our cup and running it over, Lord. Uh, I know my cup is full, Lord, and I'm sure a lot of people here would say the same thing as well, Lord. Uh, thank you, Father, for, for dying on the cross for us, Lord, for shedding your blood so that we can be saved and uh, we can have eternal life. And, and as uh, Pastor Noel just preached, we could uh, be able to live a life for you, Lord. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for you coming down, we couldn't do anything for you, Lord. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we thank you, Father, and we thank you, Lord, that Lord, that you have us here and you have us uh, in one body and one, one mind, Lord. Amen. Faithfully uh, worshiping you, Lord, through hymns and, mm -hmm. and through uh, testimonies and through fellowships, Lord. I pray that you bless the fellowship, mm -hmm. bless the meal. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for, for all the preparation, all the work that you've mm -hmm. to this blood, Lord. Amen. It's been a blessing, Father. I pray Lord, that you would uh, do these. Uh, Preachers, as they go mm -hmm. back more than everybody else after the after the service today, Father. Yes. Protect them and give them family mercies and safety, Lord. Yes. Uh, Lord, we pray for this offering, Lord, that you bless it and use it mightily for your glory, Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Father, for what you've given us these past few days and what you are going to give us the rest of this day. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 going to give some announcements while the offering is still going around so church uh, Wednesday service is still ongoing 7 to 9 p.m. at the Santa Clara place there will be no visitation because uh, you guys worked hard and we already did an extras uh, we already did some soul winning so 
Uh, we're going to give you a one hour break on that one, all right? So no soul winning on Wednesday. Just come straight to church, 7 to 9 p.m. And then we'll do prayer meeting and uh, the deep Bible study, all right? <laughs> and then uh, Saturday, uh, it's still ongoing, discipleship classes, all right? So uh, the tracking is still ongoing. So tracking, 11 uh, in the morning at the same place, all right? Let's keep trying to win souls out there. And uh, if you guys can come to discipleship and don't make it a habit of coming late, okay? It's not a good testimony for the other teachers because remember, I'm not the one that's teaching. There are other people who train themselves to teach you, okay? And they're trying to, I'm discipling them and they're discipling you. That's what I'm trying to do. So please do not come late. And especially if you're a teacher, do not do that, okay? Because it's you're disrespecting uh, your students and if the Lord calls you to something, it's not a good testimony, okay? All right, so then... Uh, other announcements Sunday is as usual there's nothing else going on all right it's pretty simple did I miss anything important that I should be announcing before I forget okay I think I covered uh, all bases um, so uh, lunch is there feel free to go through the line and then uh, I would like to ask brother Sean to ask uh, the Lord's blessing upon the lunch Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for feeding us such good preaching. Uh, yeah. Like the preacher said, too, the testimonies, the music. I mean, it's just been a diverse spiritual meal you've given us this whole week, Lord God. I pray that you give us some good food physically now so we can keep going and uh, get that last uh, full spiritual meal you got planned for us, Lord. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. You finish it off how God leads you. Okay, bro. <laughs> I got no idea what season it is. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. What was in y'all's food? <laughs> I didn't eat. Well, the preacher told me the other day, he said, uh, I don't know if you know how to tell time or not, but there's a clock in the back. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly. I'm, pe I'm teasing him. But it doesn't do any good unless you look and see what time it is when you start. <laughs> Let me just say a couple of things real quick before we get into the message uh, this afternoon. If you don't mind, please, I'd, I'd like to say a couple of things. First of all, uh, thank you very much for uh, everything you've done. It's been a blessing to be here. The room is amazing. It's absolutely beautiful, um, even though the water is disgusting. <laughs> I thought when you came over here with all the liberal stuff going on and Mother Earth and all the rest of that, I was going to see some kind of beautiful, and it was like the, like, Unbelievable, just what a, what a strange dichotomy yes. there, huh? But uh, just a beautiful room and a beautiful area. You do live in a nice area. I'm going to tease you and pick on you because I'm from Michigan and we got to get that kind of stuff going, right? But we have grass and things like that that you don't have, but just a beautiful area. Just really do appreciate your kindness and the food and the fellowship and uh, yeah. just a real blessing to be here and be a part of it. And then I'd also like to say this. Uh, I agree with Brother Knowles. Uh, what he said, and I, I, for me personally, and gentlemen, this is no, no shot at the preachers by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the preaching's been wonderful. I've gotten help from it. I'm grateful for it. Um, just sat there just soaking it up every service. Just been good. But the best service for me was that testimony service last night. And I want you to understand why I'm saying that. I'm saying that because I'm a pastor. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily look at things now like I used to, you know, 15 years ago. Yes, I don't even look at them now like I did five years ago. Mm -hmm. yep. And so to me, it was a real blessing to see that God's using that Amen. man yep. in an area like this Amen. to reach people. Yes. Amen. And uh, I don't know Brother Kim very well. I know him from a distance. But uh, to me, to come here, you don't know what you're walking into. I know where he stands on the Bible and all that stuff. I know who his friends are. I, I didn't feel like I was walking into a situation I shouldn't be in or I wouldn't have been here, right? right. But you don't really know until you go and get to meet him and see the fruit of that, that labor. And so to hear your testimonies and to see where you come from. Um, you know, everybody wants to know where the preacher comes from and everybody's infatuated with that kind of a thing. But to me, I'm infatuated with regular people. Yes, sir. Yes. To yes. come to church and have to go to work tomorrow morning, but spent their whole week here, exhausted, 
Brother Robert running me back and forth and all the rest of that that he's been doing for us. And thanks for your prayers. We've survived his driving. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make it through tomorrow and we'll be all right. Amen. He's been a real blessing. I appreciate it, but I want to, brother. I want to publicly tell you I appreciate it. You've been a blessing to me, so thank you for all you've done, and and it's just been good, and I appreciate it very much. And my my hope and prayer now is uh, that you won't fall asleep from all those donuts. <laughs> and you just you just burned up all that glycogen, and your insulin's through the roof, and it's going to start crashing, and now you're going to take a nap on me. <laughs> So I can preach for two hours and have a blast and you won't even know. I won't do that to you with the Lord's help. But uh, I do, uh, do want to say my hope and prayer now is that uh, God will use this message to help somebody. Yes. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, I could care less about trying to impress you. Sure. Amen. Uh, the preachers have already said it. It's not a competition. Yes. I don't like being... Uh, let me take that back. I'm very competitive. Yeah. Very. I wouldn't do what I do for a hobby if I wasn't. But one thing I know is that when you get in church, if you let that, yes. that yes. sinful flesh yes. get in the picture, God's gone. Yes. Amen. And uh, I'm scared of God. I ain't scared of you. Amen. I'm really not even scared of disappointing you. That's good. Yeah. I'm scared of God. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't, it's not a competition. I appreciate the preacher saying that and the spirit that's been here sure. like that. Yeah. But that being said, I do want to give you something that will help you. Okay. And I will say this from this message. Uh, there's a real, and I mean, I realized that last night. It was great. There's a real wide range of people here. It's a lot like my home church. Um, we have about probably 50% of my church family. You can judge me for this and judge them for this if you want, but you'll answer to God for it when you see him. About half of my church family has been divorced and remarried. See, we're reaching people. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, I'd say I'd say uh, I'd say close to half of the adults in my church have tattoos. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Not since they came to my church, right? They didn't come to my church and like, oh, we're a liberal church going out getting tattoos. But I'd say I'd say probably close to half. Wow. Um, God, God, I, I got a guy in my church with, with the earrings in still. Mm -hmm. Biker dude. Mm -hmm. I've been criticized for it. You know how long he's been going to Brother Reagan's church. You know a lot how long he was in the world. Yeah. yeah. You know how late in life he got saved? Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think God's doing an amazing work that that man keeps coming in and sitting right where you're yeah. sitting, brother, every service. We need to move him because the camera, what are people going to think? Come on, I don't church. care what they think. Yeah. I want to help him. Yeah. That's real good. And I want to help you tonight, this yeah. afternoon, whatever it is. I got no idea. Three hours off, my body clock's a complete mess. I'm <laughs> awake when I should be asleep and asleep when I should be awake, and I don't care. I want to help you. Thank you, Pastor. 1 Samuel chapter number 30, if you would, please. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. All that was just my nice sayings before the message, so the clock is starting if you're grading me, all right? <laughs> all right, 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verse number 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south in Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him, look at this, lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. I don't know if you've ever cried like that. David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. Distressed is a strong word. Yes. And then the Holy Ghost of God wanted you to understand what was going on in David's psyche mm. and his emotions deep in his soul. So he laid out for us that he wasn't just distressed. He was greatly distressed. Yeah. For the people spake of stoning him. 
because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. I want to preach to you about the blessing of discouragement. Wow. The blessing of discouragement. Let's pray, please. Father, I love you, Lord, and I thank you so much for who you are. Yes. And God, you don't work the way I want you to work. I'll just be honest about it. But you work the right way. And Father, we need some help this afternoon, Lord. We really need your help. Yes. And Father, I, I'm just standing there and I'm watching everybody get excited about the Lord and especially watch the young men, Father. It's a real blessing to see young men on fire for Jesus Christ in a day and age when they don't care about the Lord at all. They care more about video games and, yes. and, and women and all the rest of the stuff that matters to them, money and all that, Lord. To see some young men that love Jesus Christ and want to serve Him and get excited about Him, Lord. It's a blessing to watch that. And Father, to think about all the testimonies we heard and the folks here from even other parts of the world that came here just for the Bible. And to consider, God, that this has been a great week and a lot of excitement, a lot of encouragement that we've had from being here. But, God, to stand there and watch and to think about what's coming in the future for some of them and they got no idea it's coming. Yes. And God, help us to get the point this afternoon that when we're discouraged, there's a blessing in it. Yes. And give us what we need to see it through. So that, God, you can do the work you want to do down the road, not only in individual lives, but in the lives of this church, in the lives of the pastor. And, Father, I pray now that you would control me, because I know you won't use a man you can't control. So if I fail in my own eyes, that doesn't matter as long as you're happy, and I just want you to lead me. If you tell me to cut it short, help me to be sensitive to it and cut it short, and just to follow you every step of the way. And do something here, God, that no man can do, and that is make a difference in the hearts and lives of your people and help somebody today, Father. They need help. So help them, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now here we got my favorite Bible character, King David. Of all the characters in the Bible, and I've mused on this a lot because there's some great characters in the Bible. I mean, Elijah's one you can't help but love, you know? The more you study the life of Elisha and you see his character, the more you say, man, I think I want to be an Elisha. I think that'd be cooler than being Elijah. So as I muse on all the different characters in the Bible, I, I really kind of keep settling back in on this man, David. If I had to pick a favorite, it's King David. He just, he just embodies everything that you would think of when you think of a great leader. Yeah. I mean, this man is a phenomenal leader. Yes. He understands leadership. Yes. You live in a world obsessed with leadership, but little, listen to me, I'm telling you right now, the world doesn't get it. Right. Yeah. Amen. What it means to be a true leader, before he ever became a leader, and what made him a great leader, is he first learned to follow. Yeah. That's right. There's no such thing as a great leader without a great follower. That man who is a great leader, one thing you know about him, since you know him as a great leader, what you know about him just you can write it down whether you know the background or not. He's a great leader. That means he knows what it means and has experienced and proven it. He's done it. He's learned to follow or he'll never be a great leader even if he's a leader. He'll never be a great leader. David's a great leader. What I love about David is he learned how to kill. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? Stay with me. I'm, that's not the end of the message, all right? But honestly, isn't it kind of cool? Yeah. Yeah. Is, don't we all naturally get gravitated to that Elijah? Yeah. I mean, come on, man. We're Bible believers. That means we love truth. Yeah. And we love, like it's been preached about and talked about, we love wielding the sword. We yeah. love having that bi answer to that Bible question. I mean, somebody was asking me a Bible question at lunch, and I did my best. I said, what church do you go to? He said, this one. I said, go ask your pastor. If I was wrong, you could straighten it out and say, Reagan, don't know nothing and all that. So, okay. <laughs> We all love having the answers, don't we? I'll bet you will, too. Did you hear him? He said, will do. <laughs> we, love, we love it, right? Yeah. And come on, a piece of you should. 
You should, you should love the thrill of truth. Amen. You should love the thrill of the battle. The, the, the verses are in the Bible. You know, cursed is he that keepeth back his sword from blood. I, I don't want to lose that edge. I don't want to start softening up and becoming this, this, this really kind of wishy-washy, yeah, I'm a Bible believer, but I'm kind of a new agey Bible believer. I'm kind of the, the new style of Bible believer. Like I talked about last time, I am tired of watching it happen in my generation of Bible believers. Listen, I need to say something. Because somebody came to me and said, listen, brother, is it wrong to say I'm from PBI? <laughs> listen, I want to be clear because this is a common problem in communication. You can say something and you say it a certain way and mean it a certain way. And people then perceive what you're saying differently. And so they heard something say, well, brother Reagan said, it ain't wrong to say you're from PBI. You graduated from PBI, you should be thankful for it and yeah. proud of it. Not a stinking, lying, sniveling, little betraying, well, you know, I, I you know, well, you know. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'm from PBI. Yeah. Yeah, I graduated from Blue Ridge Bible Institute. Amen. You say, what's that? It's a great school. You don't know about it, but it was a blessing, man. I mean, it's a badge of honor. Thank God Amen. for it. Amen. What I was saying is that spirit of, <clears throat> yeah, that I'm from See what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We don't throw away the one just because we recognize, hey, look, we're kind of being a little bit too much this way, and then we swing all the way over to the other end of the spectrum. What I see in David is a young man who had the whole package, man. A guy who knew how to wield the sword. An expert in battle. And at the exact same time, you know what I see in David? A soft, tender-hearted, kind ministering, gentle, worshipful, sweet-spirited man who was only dangerous to the enemies of God, but not dangerous to the people of God. He became a great man because when he was young, he was a great man. But God had to do some things in David's life to prepare him for the throne. You think about the fact that guys penning down psalms that you still read today long before he was Mr. Great Leader. In him, in an embryonic state, spiritually speaking, was all that it took to become the man that he became. But what it was in David's life is a series of decisions that he made along the way that made him become the man God had in him and it eventually came out. He could have aborted that process. When you stop and you think about the great men of the Bible, you think about Elijah. What made Elijah a great man wasn't the 400 you know, prophets of Baal and all you know, the hundreds and hundreds of prophets he winds up slaying. That, that wasn't really the deal. What made Elijah the great man that he was is that when he was in that cave, in that state of depression, wanted to die, he was suicidal at that state, in that moment, he made a decision and he came out of that thing and continued on. That's why you know him as Elijah today. Wow. Amen. Yeah, that's true. Decisions he made along the way. Yeah. You think about Joseph. You know what the Bible tells you about Joseph? It says he, they hurt his feet. Long before he became the great leader that he was, he went through some things. And I got thinking about that when I read it just a few days ago. I was, man, that's interesting. I'd be willing to bet you, I sanctified imagination, take it or leave it. I'd be willing to bet you that those feet were hurt the rest of his life. I would almost promise you that as he's standing up there in front of all the people and he's the great leader, the great man, and oh, there's Joseph, and, and that he's standing there thinking, man, God, please help this ceremony to end quick because my feet are killing me. God, if you don't hold me up right now, if you don't help me to, to fake it till I make it right now, all these people are going to see how weak I actually am, God. I need you, God. Help me with this situation, God. He was hurt. He was crushed. He was forgotten. He was thrown away. He was persecuted. He was pressured. I mean, he had it so bad. Long before he became the man that he became. Yeah. Discouragement. I, only, I think about it all the time. When I'm reading through there in my Bible and I see Joseph, 
I just stop and I think, I wonder what it felt like to sit in that jail cell. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder about the problems between him and God. Because it's like, as soon as I got serious about God, as soon as I got right with God, as soon as I dedicated to God, as soon as I made sure this is it, I made my decisions, my world came apart. Mm -hmm. And the devil's showing up, there, showing up there in that prison cell, sitting down right next to him and saying, yeah, man, you know, that's <laughs> what you get for serving God. Yeah. They told you if you did right, it'd turn out. And it ain't turning out, is it? Yeah. yeah. They told you that if you train up your child in the way he should go when he's old, he'll not depart from it, didn't he? Yeah. Now you got some wayward kids, mm-hmm, you failure. Yeah. I imagine every time God used that preacher to lead somebody else's son to Christ and he sees the kids' his own son's age that the devil shows up and just steps on those sore feet. Yeah. And he gets discouraged. I, I just feel like I need to say it. I've seen kids raised in the same home by the same parents under the same circumstances and some of the kids serve God and some of the kids don't because your kids make their own decisions. Well, somebody told me train up a child in the way you should go. That means that if I do it all right, my kids are going to turn out right. Hey, have you ever checked out Proverbs? He says, son, give me thine heart. Yeah. The whole point of Proverbs is if the kid will give his heart, if the kid will lend his ear, then the good things will come out. But if the kid don't, it's on them. You trained him up. Yeah. You did your job. You weren't perfect. Mm -hmm. But you did your job and the idiot made his own choices. It ain't on you. That's it. Amen. But, see, but see how that thing Those feet hurt, man. Yeah. Those feet hurt. Yeah. David here is in this situation and... Man, he is absolutely coming unglued. I mean, what has happened is that he has really kind of got wore out with what had been going on in his life. Flip back there quickly with me, if you would, please. Look back at 1 Samuel chapter number 26. Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter number 26. You know the story here will just kind of get you caught up quickly. But the, the Bible tells us how David's there and Saul's hunting David. And then a deep sleep from God comes on Saul and his men, right? And David goes there. He says, Who, who's going to go with me? And Abishai goes with David. And they sneak down there into the camp. And, and literally a miraculous situation, a deep sleep from God. Comes on them. They sneak all the way through there. They get Saul's spear, his bolster. They go on up there in the hill and they're crying out, Hey, Abner, hey, Abner, you failure. Hey, look. David proves to Saul, I'm not here to hurt you. Look at the end of chapter number 26, the last verse. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son, thou shalt both do great things and also shalt prevail. So David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. That ends good, right? Hey, can I say this? A great victory. You know what you've had this week as a church? You know what you've had? You've had a great victory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't that good? Yes. Amen. Hey, it turned out well. All the anticipation leading up to it and hoping yes. the preachers don't come in and drop the ball and mess everything up. Please pray that we can finish that. <laughs> right? Great victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now let me let me let me warn you about something. All right. How the devil how the devil works. Yeah. Yeah. When you least expect it, yes, sir. and you don't even know where it's coming from. You quit. Do you know I've been in situations where my wife's like, What's wrong with you? And I say, I don't know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She's like, I'm worried about you. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. <laughs> I've been married to you for 20 years, man. You ain't fine. You know what I've watched? I've watched Christians go through unbelievable tragedy. And I've watched the grace of God show up and flood them. Amen. And like, how are you doing as good as you're doing? And their answer is, I don't know how I do it without God. See, you're expecting the devil to come at certain times. Yeah. But I told you last time I preached, he's more subtle than any beast of the yeah. field which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he's going to show up when you're not expecting him. Yeah, that's real good. That's a great victory, David. Look at chapter 27, verse number 1. David said in his heart, yeah. you better watch out for your heart. Mm -hmm. Come on. It'll lie to you. Uh. I shall now perish 
one day at the hand of Saul. There's nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines, and Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel, so I shall escape out of his hand. And you know what he does? He goes down to Achish, king of Gath, and he winds up in Ziklag with his boys. You're not going to find in there anywhere where, God, where David went to God and said, yeah. God, yeah. what do I do? Yes. Yeah. He had a pattern, a habit, a character of going to God. Uh -huh. I'm not, I am not beating him up. I'm not here to preach to you, David. It's David's own fault. Yeah, you know why I'm not going to do that to you? Because I'm David. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. He winds up in this situation, and it's because of decisions he made, and as a great leader, hear me, as a great leader, he messed up, and he got his guys and their families in a mess. Yeah. I'd still sign up. I'd still follow him. I didn't say I'd follow him in a false doctrine and all that. I, I said, if I was there at that time, yep. I'd have been one of those in debt, distressed, and discontented. Yeah, sure. You know what my church is? My church is a cave. That's what it is. It's for the in debt, distressed, and discontented. You know what this is? You know what I saw this is last night? This is the in debt, the distressed, and the discontented. Hey, God brought you here. This is your cave. Amen. And God's giving you a pastor. Yeah. Yes. Amen. And I'm here to back him up. Amen. Amen. And he's a man. Yeah. Amen. Like me. Yeah, sure. Like David. Yeah. And if he does this long enough, sooner or later, mm. oops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Did I did I really do that? I knew better. Yeah, sure. sure. When a man acts out of character, it is because he's under pressure. Wow, that speaks. Well. Do not ever forget that. That's really good. Because you'll come into church and somebody you've been friends with for a very long time, what's going on with them? Why don't you cut them some grace? Because if they're not what they normally are, yeah. it's because they're under pressure. That's Here's the hard part. God allows, God designs the pressure. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I've talked to other guys that do what I do, right? And we've discussed our different circumstances and the amazingly weird, hard, crazy, kind of even unexplainable sometimes problems, pressures, discouragements, and all the rest of that that come with being in the ministry and preaching the Word of God and trying to stick a, take a stand for Jesus Christ and do something the devil does not want you to do. Minister to people. And, and, and it's funny because we all go through the same things. The circumstances are not the same. Right. The circumstances for Joseph were not what they were for David. Yeah, that's right. right. The circumstances for Elijah were not the same as they were for Elisha. The circumstances are not always the same, but the process, when you're a Bible-believing preacher, I'm telling you right now, younger guys that are going into the ministry, hopefully someday you're called to preach, whatever God, I'm just telling you right now, you will go through the same process he goes through. I know you're going to leave and think you're going to do it all right. And that's not going to happen to you. But it will. God has a certain medicine for every one of us, preachers or not. Sure. Come on. And you're going to have to drink your medicine, yeah. and it don't go down very well. Oh, man. Yeah. Here David is, and God's got some medicine for him. And he is at the lowest point yet in his life in this chapter. He is on his face a warrior, a battle-hardened warrior on his face crying like a little girl. I don't care how tough you think you are. Come on. I do not care how tough you think Come you are. Come on. This thing is spiritual. Yes. yes. You're right. You're right. You're right. I prided myself for so long in me having a tough mind. I will die before I'll tap out. Literally, don't start with me. And I'm not trying to be goofy, okay? This fleshy stuff really, does, it's, it's just stupid. Because you're just, one day at a time, you're getting older. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to do that 15 years from now, okay? So it's just stupid. But I'm just telling you, like my mentality is, don't start a fight with me unless you're ready to die or kill me. Because I just don't care. The humiliation of tapping out is worse than the humiliation of you killing me. That crazy nut wouldn't stop. I had to kill him. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. 
I prided myself in this. In my late 30s, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning one day. I walked down the hallway because I couldn't sleep. Went into the living room. I figured, well, God got me out of bed. You know, Song of Solomon. He's going to walk with me in the night. <laughs> I went and I grabbed my Bible and I went and I sat in my front living room and I got out the piano bench. I pulled it up there in between my legs and I set that Bible out there and I start looking and I'm like, all right, Lord, what do you have to say to me? And I'm sitting there reading my Bible looking for my next wonderful sermon. And the Lord gave me it. I'm, I'm preaching it to you right now. It's life changing. You know what the sermon was? The walls of my living room at 3 o'clock in the morning started closing in on me. And I look up and I said, what? I, I, I couldn't breathe. <sighs> what? in the world is that? I, I never felt fallible. I never felt like I was going to die up until then. I'll spare you the dumb stories unless somebody thinks they can go do that and get away with it. I never thought I was going to die. I remember walking out my front door and looking up this, it was a clear cloudless night and I said, God, please, God, please, God, please, God, please, God, please, what in the world? God, stop this! I had my first encounter with anxiety. Oh. And it was on another level. Sure. Oh, and you know what God said? I'll stop it as soon as you start praying for that woman in your church that doesn't show up at services because her anxiety is kicking off. You know how preachers get sometimes. You know, you know how Christians in church get, well, where were they? Yeah, that's yeah. right. He's coming all the time, but where's his wife? Uh -huh. Kick us. Come on. And God said, how's it feel? Uh -huh. Amen, brother. Yeah. I'm talking about why God puts you at low points in your life. Uh -huh. Talking about why God allowed David to... Okay, go to Ziklag, boy. You know what's crazy? Chapter 28. You know what David doesn't know? He doesn't know what Saul's doing. Saul's running down there to a witch. Yeah, right. And God's going, I've had it. I'm done. Yeah. There he is, that wicked man. Yeah. I'm done with Saul. The timing is right. While David is flipping out, getting discouraged, cracking, after a phenomenal victory that God brought him through, he's having this wig out moment in his head, going the wrong direction, getting himself in a bad position, and then as a result, they're going out to battle. You know the story for the sake of time. He comes back in. Their women and children are gone. And David's like, oh, my wife and my kids. And right when he thinks it can't get any worse, his boys turn on him. Yeah, that's right. Listen, listen, I'm still setting up the introduction, but I'm going to move fast through my points, okay? I know preparation, delivery, proper exegesis. You're taking too long on the introduction. Save it. His boys are turning on him. Now listen, these guys are roughnecks. You understand what I'm saying? In debt, distressed, and discontented, they're outlaws. He's got a bunch of tatted up divorcees coming from the other side of the tracks. Guys that used to be in the federal pen. And they got nowhere to go. But there's this guy over here getting treated the same way they were treated for serving Jesus Christ. They had coming what they had coming, but God was getting something ready. God was bringing a band of men together. God was beginning to build something. And some time had passed, and they'd been fellowshipping together and having a good time. There was a brotherhood, a bond there. Hey, listen, a bond there like we saw last night. Yes. Yeah. Saying, don't mess with my boy, you're messing with me. We don't let them come in here and stir up trouble. Yes. We're a family. Yeah. I'll never leave Pastor Kim. As long as he stands for the Bible, I'll stand with him. Amen. That's what they were saying before they got to this chapter. Oh, man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was all because of discouragement. But wait a minute. The text tells us we read it. Why were they turning on David? It's in the text. Because the soul of every man was grieved for his wife and for his daughters. 
was his leadership that got them into a mess. Yeah, that's right. And they were talking about stoning him. Yeah. When you train with a bunch of guys like that, you, you beat each other up. You understand what I'm saying? The, the brother, I think Brother Rudolph mentioned it. The, 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 the brotherhood that comes, like we, we, we beat each other up, but then we were good. We didn't hold a grudge. That's a brotherhood, man. Yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah. I mean, it's like a guy comes in to train with us that, that can beat us up. And we're like, hey, man, you coming back? You need to sign up, bro. <laughs> no joke. That's right. That's true. It's good. Why? If you can't beat him, join him. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I don't ever want to be a part of a school where I win everything. Yeah. Right. yeah. Good. There got to be a couple guys in there that can smash me. Yeah. Yep. See what I mean? That's how I grow, right? Absolutely. We had this moron come in there. He he came in. He's I can whoop any man in here. Oh. And my coach says, "Oh, yeah." This broken English. I can't do it. He's from Brazil. Oh yeah. <laughs> he says, "Yeah." He's my size. My coach is my size exactly. He said, "What do you train?" He said, "Look, see do." He said, you ever hear of it? I said, he said, what? He said, look, see, do. He said, I, I look at it on YouTube, I see what they do, and I do it. <laughs> you're laughing, he was serious. That's the generation you're in. Yeah. That's how they think they learn the Bible. Amen. You ain't learning the Bible like that. You need a cave, man. I'm telling you, you need a cave. You need face-to-face -face interaction. You need to swell, smell the sweaty, nasty armpits. You need somebody sweat dropping in your face. You need to look at your blood dropping on his back while you keep going. My coach said, oh, okay. He walks around behind his back. He goes, we know what that means, right? It's okay. He says, hey, come here, buddy. This is Mike. He's a, he, excuse me, Pastor Mike. He's 44 years old. He's a pastor. You're going to go with him. He walks away. <laughs> Nothing's worse than being beat up by a man of the cloth. You know what I mean? <laughs> horrible, horrible. Jesus, man. They put him all the way, they put him all the way through the paces, one guy after the next. He runs off the mat and puking, comes back in. You could see him panicking. <laughs> you know what that idiot said? He looked at my coach who used to do mixed martial arts, not just jujitsu, and he said, that's because we're doing grappling. If we do stand-up, it'd be different. Wow. He said, go get my mitts. Wow. He, it, we'll end it there. <laughs> he never came back. Yeah. Yeah. Look, when you train together, there's a bond that gets built. Yes. Yes. I'm getting blown up this week. Where are you, man? Where are you, man? Where are you, man? I'm in California. Because cause there's, there's a brotherhood there. Yeah. Right. You better be careful about that. Because when discouragement sets in, ah. you might be the one saying, let's stone him. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And when that hit David, preachers, when that hit David, there's nothing more painful yes, sir. Yeah. than when people you love yes, sir. talk about getting rid of you. Sure. Amen, brother. Yeah. Yes, sir. I thought when the church grew it would get easier. It doesn't get any easier. Amen. The people you say they'll never turn on me yeah. are the ones that will and the ones you think, man, that guy ain't going to make it. I don't like him. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Are the ones that shock you. Sure. Yeah, that's right. That's true. And he's down on his face coming unglued. But there's a blessing in this discouragement. Let's look at it fast. The first blessing is revival. Look at verse number 6, and I really got to move. I am watching the clock. Look at verse number 6. Back in our text, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. The end of the verse, But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You know what that is? That's revival. See, we always say we're not going to see revival. We haven't seen revival, all that stuff. What you're talking about is we haven't seen evangelism. We haven't seen souls getting saved, conversions. Revival is you and me. Revival is the individual saying, Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. Listen, 
Revival is not some mystical, super spiritual, I hope it can happen, this crazy way far out there, wild story. Revival is a decision because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Revival's on me to get right with God and say, Lord, I need you, and I'm trusting you, and I'm back to you. I gotta have you. He encouraged himself. Yeah, himself. What we've been doing this week is encouraging each other. Yes. And that's catchy, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I can't help but to see some of these guys just busting loose and running around. And man, I'm standing back there. I'm standing back there watching. And part of me, listen, listen, I love it. I'm not criticizing you, okay? I'm trying not to cry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know what it feels like to be that on fire and to think, man, it's just great! You better be careful. Yeah. It is great. But if you got a heart like that for God, then the devil's going to come after you and you can't handle it! Amen. Amen. That's good. I'll never quit. Yeah. Man, this is real good. You better be careful, man. You better learn that those times are coming. Yes. And listen to me. Listen to me. I can do preachers can do their best to prepare you for it. But nothing really prepares you for it. Yeah. You can say, I'm signing up for ranger school. I'm one of the guys in the cave. I want to be there when he gets on the throne. I'm going to back this thing up. I want to do all that God has for me. You can say it all you want. But until you get out there and have them putting the pressure on you and keeping the pressure on you, and when you're trying to fall asleep, keeping you awake and not feeding you and making you go when you're starving, making you go when you're dehydrated, making you sit it out in the heat, making you lay there and don't move though the mosquitoes are eating your face off and the horse flies are chewing on you and you got to go to the bathroom on yourself, but you got to lay there. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that sounds great. <laughs> what I'm talking about is really serving God in the end times. Yeah. Right. And saying, I'm not going to quit on God. That's good. Amen. Amen. That's good. You better know it's very simple. David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And that's what's one of the greatest things about discouragement. Is you really, you can't explain it. You can't fix it. You can't stop it. Some little punk will come by. Well, brother, you know, the joy of the Lord. The problem is you don't have the fruit of the Spirit. You need to grow in the Lord. And, you know, even, like, it's still wet behind the ears. You know what I mean? <laughs> Two whiskers. <laughs> listen, listen. Yeah. I, I've already forgotten more about all that than you've learned. Yes. And there is no explanation for it. Talking about real ministry, really a real leader. I want to be a David. Yeah, yeah. So God has put me in my own places where that's where I was. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because when I was younger, all I cared about was the shouting and the glory and the hard preaching and the. And God says, you know what? I'm going to make you a pastor. I want you to be an Elisha. Well, God, I want to be an Elijah. I don't care what you want. I want you to be an Elisha. Uh -huh. So before you're ready to be an Elisha, I'm going to put you in a place where you're done and you can't even do it anymore. Yes. And then I'm going to see if you'll turn to me and call on me and walk with yeah. me in spite yeah. of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what is wonderful? You know what's wonderful? People told me, Brother Reagan, don't be a pastor. I had lots of people giving their opinion, brother, about my ministry. Don't be a pastor. An evangelist to a third world country, maybe. My favorite mission trips are third world countries, man. You don't have time for the crazy stories. It's cool stuff. I like it. The misery of it. To see what my brothers and sisters... Anyways, listen. Don't be a pastor. I said, you're right. Don't worry. You're an evangelist. I think you're right. You know what God said? I ain't letting you off the hook that easy. Because yeah. preaching's the fun part. Yeah, you got it. Sure. You got it. You got it. So now it's amazing because God made me a pastor. And I actually, 
I actually love people. That's good, Pastor. I used, to, I used to say I don't. I actually didn't. So God had to put me in my own places where I couldn't even pick my head up anymore. And the devil's saying, this is your own fault too, on top of everything else. And I'm like, you're right, it is. God's done with you. Yeah, he probably is. You know, some of the greatest moments in my ministry, this is horrible, but I'm telling you, some of the greatest moments in my ministry, when I get the call, and I know when I, when I answer the phone, I, I know that adrenaline on that fight or flight, the hormones and the voice, No. Yeah. Yeah. We need you. We need you, Miss Grace. You gotta get here. And she can hear the voice over the speaker. And she goes, oh, "What, honey? Let's go. We gotta go. Cancel all the plans. Jump in the car. You go set up the road. And you wait for the police to leave. Yes, sir, bro. You wait for the police to leave. You wait for the corner to leave." And you walk in the house and you see the parents. <laughs> and you don't preach a message. No. Yeah, no, you don't. You don't give them Romans 8 28. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. You walk up to them and you hug them. Yes. Yeah. You sit on the couch all day. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. That's yeah. oh, man. But you can't cry with them. Uh -huh. You don't even know that you're supposed to shut up. Yeah. Until you've been crushed. Yeah. Yeah. Until you've been greatly distressed. Yeah. Until you've been at the bottom. You don't even have the knowledge oh, man. to know that God does supernatural things just by your presence. Yeah. Just by your friendship. Just by a hug. Just by a tear streaming down your cheek while it streams down their cheek that the Holy Ghost of God works miracles and doing something great. You don't even know it unless you've been crushed. Unless your feet hurt. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. And that's why God let him be greatly distressed. Because in just a couple of short chapters it ends in Hebron Yes. This chapter ends in Hebron. I, I'm not even going to show you there because I asked the Lord to tell me when to cut it off and I'm going to. I'm not even through my first point. This chapter ends in Hebron. Hey, 2 Samuel chapter 2, you know where they put David? On a throne in Hebron. Right after a massive failure. Mm -hmm. Great depression. And a personal decision to say, you know what? I'm turning to God right now because this is bad. It ain't going to get better. I don't know how to fix it. I need God now. Yeah. And he turns to God and as a result, you know who David is and he's on a in just a couple of short chapters. So my message to you, it's been great, ain't it? It's real encouraging to have a blowout. You know what the devil does right after him? Yes. You're not going to see it coming. You're not going to know why. Come on, if the Lord's speaking, come on, just move. You're not going to see it coming. You're not going to know why. You may not be able to explain it, but it's probably coming. You want to serve God? You want God to make you a great preacher? You want God to make you a witness? You want to reach your lost family members and your friends and your acquaintances? You want to help your brothers and sisters in Christ? Tell God right now, Lord, I want to go through whatever I have to go through to be whatever I got to be so that I can be an able minister of Jesus Christ. And God, you're going to have to help me make the right decisions. When I am at a point where I'm done and I don't care and I can't do it, I'm smoked. I'm smoked. God help me to encourage myself in you. Please help me. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand? Can I have my pianist here? We'll just sing one song. Just one. 
463. 463. Thank you for coming to our blowout. Amen. What a finish! Amen. And it was done at the right sequence. Yes. And I can see that finger and that touch of God where if one was before the other, it would have ruined a beautiful music. It, and you preachers were led to preach what God told you to preach. And thank you. Amen. We'd, you have no idea how much of a blessing you are to us. Amen. And I don't think we would know this. You say how much we are a blessing to you. Thank you. But I still think we won't know until we all go to heaven. Amen. Let us close. This is how we like to close is this song. Here we go. Complete in thee, no work of mine may take, dear Lord, the place of thine. Thy blood has pardoned and bought for me, and I am now complete in thee. Yea, justified, O oh, blessed thought, and sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood has pawned and bought for me, and glorified I too shall be complete in thee. No more shall sin, thy grace hath conquered reign within. Thy voice will bid the tempter flee, and I shall stand complete in thee. Yes! Justified, O blessed God, and sanctified salvation wrought. Lord, and my for me, glorified I too shall be complete in thee. Each one supplied, and no good thing to me need I. Since thou my portion, Lord, will be, I ask no more. Complete in the air. Oh, blessed thought, I salvation wrought. Blood has part in my for me. And glorified I too shall be Pierce your when before thy bar All tribes and tongues assembled are Among the chosen will I be At thy right hand complete Yeah! Yea, justified Blessed thought Sanctified Salvation wrought, thy blood has part and my for me, and glorified I too shall be complete in thee, forever blessed of all thy fullness, Lord possess thy praise throughout eternity. Thy love I'll sing complete. Come on! Justified, oh blessed thought, and sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood has part been bought for me, and glorified I too shall be. Amen. Wow, what a blowout! Amen. Amen. Amen.